was the Bruins' high point of the 1980s. Brad Park's overtime goal sent the Bruins to the conference final in 1983. It was the last hurrah for a team that Bruins fans still hold dear. Pete Peters had a career year. Rick Middleton played his finest hockey as a Bruin. And linemate Barry Peterson helped to carve up the Buffalo defense, leading to the decisive Game 7 win. Since that time, the Bruins have failed to even escape the first round. Four times they have fallen at the hands of the Montreal Canadiens, where names like Penny, Drouin, and Naslin have been the culprit. The Bruins, in fact, haven't won a postseason game since 1985. But they enter this series looking to start a new streak of wins. One that will help them rekindle the magic of five years ago. The Buffalo Sabres, meanwhile, return to postseason play after sitting out the last two years. The two previous seasons saw them lose to Quebec in the opening round. So the Sabres joined the Bruins in the search for their first playoff series win in five years. Coming up next, two teams looking to find the magic of playoffs past. It's the Bruins and Buffalo Sabres, live on Nesson. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Boston Garden, game one of the Adams Division semifinal series. Hi, I'm Dave Shea, and for the Bruins, well, they have the confidence to beat this club. They took the season series 4-3-1. and one. They won the last meeting between the clubs in Buffalo. They feel they can use that as a springboard into this one. Key? Tom Barrasso always seems to be when they play Buffalo. Boston's going to have to get off plenty of shots on Barrasso, try to get to him early, see if they can get him rattled and go from there. They're also going to have to play their style of hockey. That means hitting hockey, tight checking hockey, and hope that Reggie Lemelin does his normal good job and goal. It'll be Lemelin against Barrasso, the Bruins, and the Sabres. For a closer look at this one, let's go up to the booth right now with Fred and Derek. Thank, thank you, Dave. And, uh, of course, the goaltending, all important. And uh, starting first with Tom Barrasso, he's played in eight playoff games, uh, four-point goals against average. That's, that's kind of high. So uh, we're talking about Barrasso, but he has yet to prove himself in the playoffs. True. He has, had his, he has had his problems in the playoffs, no doubt about it, but he's also had a lot of experience under his belt since the last time he was in them. His weakness has always been between the legs. Now, that scouting report gets around the league, and the guys get to think they can beat him there. Tom Barrasso has learned to shut that off, give it to you, take you away, take it away from you, and now everybody's going to go upstairs on him, and he's also waiting now. He guesses properly he's going to be tough. Well, you're talking about experience in playoffs. Reggie Lemlin certainly has plenty coming over from the Calgary Flames and an excellent season overall for the Boston Bruins, fourth best percentage record in the National Hockey League. Reggie Lemelin, his stand-up goaltending is standing him in good stead. He's got an excellent pair of hands. He's playing his angles extremely well. And that is something that must stay with him. When Reggie's got the angles down, he is also going to be very tough to beat. So if he's moving well in the nets early, we'll be able to see. And that's the thing to watch with Lemelin. Home ice advantage, only important if you capitalize on it. And uh, you only have one shot. Well, you have two shots to do it. You better win both games. Right, you got to win them both. And basically, the Buffalo Sabres building is just the same size. Just a, a tad bigger, maybe, but not much, not noticeably. So it's going to be the same as playing home and away in this series. Should not make much of a difference. And we'll have the opening face-off in just a minute. It's time. Jock Cloutier, backup goaltender to Barrasso and Pupa not dressing tonight. Mike Donnelly, Bob Halkidis, and Ed Hospodar also not dressing tonight for the Buffalo Sabres. And the Boston Brewers, Reed Larson still out with the shoulder injury. He could return when the series moves to Buffalo this weekend. Tommy Lehman still trying to get back on track after being out with a knee injury. He's out for another week or two. Billy O'Dwyer, Rick Middleton, and Willie Platt will not dress for tonight's playoff opener. Well, Derek, I, there's a sign hanging here in the garden that I think pretty much sums up the key. The sign says one word, shoot. And that is something the Bruins must do and do a lot of. I think they got to shoot early and often. You got to get Barrasso moving one way or another, get on a rebound. The Buffalo Sabres defense, if it does have a problem, it will be in getting rebounds and clearing them out of Barrasso's way. If he's forced to stop two or three in a row, 
the roof will fall in eventually, and that's what the Bruins have to do, shoot to get that original rebound coming talk, at him. Talk with Ted Sater uh, while the teams were warming up, and uh, he said, you know, we're not just happy to be here. You know, we just consider this a goal that we set at the beginning of the season. Uh, we're not satisfied that, hey, we made the playoffs, and that makes the season a success. It'll be a success if we move on and try to get to the championship round. But he did point out, Derek, they have 11 guys on the roster that are either rookies or in their second year who have never seen a playoff game, and that's got to be a factor tonight. It'll be a big Ladies factor. You can't short Garden stroke it, Dave. You can't get out there, get nervous, guard, try to rush things. States, rookies Marine have a tendency guard. to do that. Both Ronald teams have young players. Complete, continue the play. Finish it off with your hands. Leave them soft to do the right thing. Well, tonight's color guard is from the Boston recruiting station of the United States Marine Corps. And as they come out on the ice, Mr. Rene Rancor with Mike in hand, with Ron Harry accompanying on the organ, will perform the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last leaving whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets rang the bombs bursting in air, gave proof to the night that our flag was still there. Oh, Causeway Street is rocking. Packed house ready for tonight's playoff opener. Don Koharski will be the referee for tonight's game. The linesman, Swede Knox and Jerry Pateman. Tom Barrasso in goal for the Buffalo Sabres, named by his teammates as the team MVP this season. He has matured tremendously and is a real leader on and off the ice now for this club. And he is one of the key factors tonight. Of course, a guy that the Sabres have to contend with who's been rough all season long, Reggie Levelin. Tremendous season. First year that he finished with a sub 3.00 goals against. I know that meant a lot to him. A playoff victory tonight would mean a whole lot more. We're set to go with the call. Here's Fred Cusick. And Chris Ruto is on against Craig Ganny. Ganny starting with Bob Joyce on the left and Cam Neely on the right. And Mike Ramsey rolls it in the Boston end. Back for Ray Bork. In pursuit, Arneal for checking, and Bork gets it away. On the left to Joyce. Joyce with Gianni Trillin. Shoots off, off the left arm of Barrasso and into the stand. He went down on that shot. Telltale sign. Joyce wound up. He's down awful early. It's nearly beats him upstairs. Tom McCarthy, Derek, told me something that I found very interesting this morning. He says, all right, you know Barrasso goes down. But you can't try to beat him up top on the corners because he's so quick with his arms. You have to try to shoot over his shoulders. Shoot him, just miss his neck. Exactly, right by the head. Right by the head, which is a very dangerous <laughs> place. Ruto gets the draw, and Mike Ramsey gets it quickly to O'Neill and a heavy hit. Ramsey is flattened by Cam Neely. Number one, Bork, a hit. And uh, Janney is hauled down. The puck cleared out the center ice. Two hits already by Boston. Pass up in the center ice, Arneal knocks it away. Ray Bork, now to Kuzak, in the center ice. Joyce can't hang on to it, and Ramsey pulls it away. Taken over by Wesley, who just came on. Neal wraps Mike Ramsey again, number two, and he knocked him down. Abrachuk, broken up, and Linsman is up. Neal stays on, now replaced, as Linsman clears it in. And he takes a hit. 
over on the boards from Lindy Ruff. Winding up is Housley. Bill Housley in the center ice. No score, just underway. The drive in around the boards. Calvin on it. Calvin clears it away. The signal is for icing. Cam Neely racked up Mike Ramsey twice with the score of Austin nothing, Buffalo nothing. Back at the garden in a moment. Now we're going to see a bit of a trendsetter here. Cam Neely just finishing his check. <laughs> Ramsey figured that he would lay off. He'd already made the pass. This is a big line for Buffalo. Tucker with Andrew Chuck <clears throat> on the left wing and Mike Polino on the right. Linsman on the draw and it's back for Housley. Housley flips it away for Ruff. Ruff holding, drives. It is blocked by Telvin. Telvin clearing will be icing again. Michael may have been hurt blocking that shot by Lindy Ruff. He went right Ladies to the bench, and, and he is hurting. That's something the Boston well, Bruins cannot afford. Can't afford to lose Michael Talvin at this stage of the game. Please Just so versatile. What it is, when you get blocked a shot like that, it goes numb. Get it down the ice, get off. It should come back to him. Derek, you may have taken that shot in that area you pointed out uh, the other night. Right between the knee pad and the thigh pad, that little area. You think it got up that high? Well, he seems to be rubbing. He seems to be rubbing that area of his leg. Can't really see that. It's well. certainly not down low around his ankle. It's up no. in his thigh, in his knee. On the draw, it goes to Peterson from Casper as Terry O'Reilly makes a change. Slowly around the Burridge. Burridge having trouble working it out. Finally does. Now it's knocked back in by Tucker. Kicked in by Andrichuk. He's checked in the corner. Casper fighting for it. Polino, Tucker, hit by Peterson, but Polino keeps it in on the board. Now to Tucker. Tucker hauled down by Peterson. They let it go. Andrichuk, very tricky behind the net. Trying to put it in front. Is checked. Gets it again away from Bork. Wheels it back out in front. Is broken up by Bork and the puck clear to center ice. But Buffalo had a real threat going there. And it looked like holding on Peterson, but Kaharski let it go. Bork trying to get away from Andrew Chuck has trouble and is knocked down. And Shepard keeps it in. Intercepted. Marquardt out. Three men break for Boston. Marquardt for Burridge. Burridge in deep is hit by Krupp and broken up. The Turgeon around for Priestley. Stopped by Wesley. Shot in. Blocked. Bounces back at the line. Kept in by Wesley. Miki takes it near the net. Miki off to Priestley, who's at left wing. Priestley is spilled by Sweeney. And Persian breaks. Persian, number one draft pick. Kept in by Shepard. He avoids a shoe bottom check. Shoe bottom went right for him and missed him. Around the board, Sweeney hauled down. And the Bruins' Marquardt works it out. Marquardt clears it in wide of Barrasso. No score. Opening minutes. In deep. Bruins four check Miller to Sweeney. Sweeney wheeling in the zone. Waiting for things to clear. Gets it. A pass. The pass came from Byers and it went right to Buffalo Shepard who cleared it away. Winding up is Wesley. And a penalty coming up on Buffalo. Delayed call. Miller clears it over the line. It's taken over by Smith. I don't know. I think, I think he caught Shepard for spearing in the back. And Klusak's back as he was going off the ice. We're in the first period. The score of Austin nothing and Buffalo nothing. Pierre Turgeon gets the penalty being called at 3.30 of this game. Slashing is the call on the Buffalo Sabres rookie. Give me Boston its first power play opportunity of the night. And they looked a little bit better toward the end of the season on the power play. Well, that was Janney's puck handling. I think they made it a little more exciting. And once the guys get used to him handling it like that, they'll go a little more for the hole. And the puck is cleared out, taking over his Telvin. He's at a point position with Bork up front. Janney, Joyce, and... Neely. Bruins drive it in around the boards. Mike Ramsey can't clear it out. Janney kept it in. Janney checked. Trying to get it back to Telvin and it's knocked away by Napier. Smith down the four check on Ray Bork. You can see the idea of Buffalo and this works. As the puck is batted at center ice by Johansson and deflected into the stands. But that was Smith who forced the play. They are moving right or quickly on top of Ray Bork. We're going to be doing that too a lot. They've ruined 
Everyone knows when you play them that you're going to have to concentrate on Ray Bork. He can kill you alone. Want to get Bork to force him to make the play. Don't let him carry it. And then you hope you, that some, a play goes awry, a bad bounce, you jump on a loose puck, and he's out of position. Well, to combat that, the Bruins are going to have to move the puck quickly. Move it very quickly, and that's what Bork did. He just fired it around the boards to Joyce just a little too far. And now the Lindsman line out. That uh, has McCarthy at left wing and Crowder at right wing. Luzak and Bork play the points, and 125 left on the Boston power play. Luzak to center right, Smith in pursuit. He sweeps it in, handled by Barrasso, wrapped around by Ramsey, kept in by Bork. Big play, moved up, but knocked away to Smith, and Smith clears it out. Luzak right back for McCarthy, handled it over the line for Lindsman. Lindsman for Bork. Bork sweeping, swooping in. Shot was saved by Barrasso. Bork has it behind the net, holding. Puts it all the way across, Napier. Checking it, it goes to McCarthy behind the net. McCarthy all the way back to Lindsman. He's playing the point. All the way back to Bork at the other side. Shot high and wide and missed. Around the board, Luzak keeps it in. Clear it around and Ray Bork moving Bork. Wraps it up, he takes a hit. Cut to Kuzak. Kuzak up the boards, check. Now Crowder keeps it in. Crowder moves it around the other side. Mike Ramsey has lost his stick. Makes a hand pass to Napier and gets a face-off, which was a good idea. Now McCarthy just ripped the stick out of Ramsey's hands. Ramsey had him tied up in front. Tommy just took his own stick, put pressure on Ramsey's, and just swept it away. Yeah. And that's, that's a matter of that goes, you want to establish your body position early in front of the net in the Stanley Cup, that you're not going to be moved out of there. So and you look to wait, wear him down, stay out there, fight it in the early stages of the game. Ray Bork, great move here, fake. Gets the shot and it picks his rebound up. Goes behind the net with it. Still a power play. 25 seconds left on the power play. Ruju on the draw with Janney. Janney gets it for Wesley. Wesley's shot reflected wide. Long rebound. Telvin able to keep it in to Joyce. Joyce on the boards. To Janney. Back to Telvin. Quick shot. Reflected wide. Nearly try to get it. Ruju does. And Ruju clears it. Not a pretty good power play for Boston. They had a couple of shots. And it's almost up. Out comes Neely, right wing side, going hard on Ruff. Trying to cut in. Moves it in near the net. Can't get control. And it is cleared away by the Sabres. They wave off icing. Buffalo back at full strength. Back comes Bork. Center ice. Fakes his shot. Holds it over the line. Gets it into Burridge. Burridge spills. A hand pass call. Heads up call. That's a good call. Real good call. With the score of Austin nothing, Buffalo nothing. Back at the garden in a moment. <laughs> Face off outside the Buffalo line after the hand pass. Six minutes played in the first period. Austin three shots. Buffalo now and the Bruins have two on the power play. The line is Sweeney with Miller on the left. Byers on the right. Gillies is hit. Taps it in the Boston end. Shoe bottom lost it there. Smith with it. Smith puts it in front. Locked by Miller and makes a quick clear. Wrapped back in by Riki. Winding up is Peterson. In front four checking is Smith. Off for Sweeney. Peterson. In the center ice. Housley knocks it away. At the Boston line, Peterson. Plays it up. Take it over by Housley. Housley, a long pass to Gillies, and is ruled offside. Well, as young as this Buffalo club is, they do have some guys that have been they, around the playoffs. They got this some guy in particular. Citizens. Yeah, they got some senior citizens. Clark Gillies on those cup-winning teams on the island. What a force he was in those. Oh, he was something. Lindy Ruff has been around during some of the better years for... Buffalo when it came to postseason. Ed Hospodar of the Philadelphia system. I think the jitters pretty well go away the first. The first period's over. The jitters pretty well settle themselves. Playoffs in a, the season usually it's first shift. Playoffs first period. The Boston line is Lindsman, Crowder, and McCarthy with Bork and Kuzak. Johansson is on defense with Ramsey. Tucker, Anderchuk, and Polino, the big line. 
Bork trying to keep it in. Does. Wraps it from inside the line. Ramsey gets it around to Johansson. Johansson to Polino. He's checked on the play by Kluzak. And finally, it's wrapped out. Tipped down into the Boston end. And play continues. Bork after it. And Andrzejczyk checked him. And Andrzejczyk battling for it. Around the boards, it is stopped by Johansson. Cut up the boards into the corner. Andrzejczyk and Bork going for it. They battle. Lindsman there to help out. And it's away to Tucker. Tucker to Johansson. Walked right in. And Lindman his first shot on. And Johansson was picking the spot that he was going to put it in. He walked right in 20 feet away. Mike Ramsey. Blocked by Kuzak. And Crowder breaks it back over the Buffalo line. Is checked by Tucker. And Mike Ramsey going here with Crowder. Now Crowder didn't retaliate. But he's going. Let's see if Ramsey gets an extra one. Crowder looked at him. And now back to the studio, Tom Larson, NHL update. Thank you, Fred. One of the games we're watching for you, the Caps and the Flyers in the Patrick Division semifinal. The Flyers out in front, 5-17 first period. Peter Zezel scores from Hill and Howe, 1-0 Philadelphia. This update is brought to you by Budweiser. Big save by Levelin on Kelly Johansson. Oh, a beauty. That keeps Crowder trying to break in on Mike Ramsey. These guys have had many a tip over the years. Crowder gives him a little flick and then he blocked the first one. Then he hit him with the left. Ramsey Crowder up the then went two. down. And Ramsey started throwing punches. Crowder says, "Good, now you're going for the extra two. He got the desired effect, but just had to take a punch to get it. <laughs> On the power play there, second for Boston, Johnny Joyce and Neely with Kelvin and Wesley. Route to Janney and the draw goes to Ruff. Ruff can't clear it out, tries a second time, blocked by Wesley, cut across the line and kept in by Joyce, who's hit by Arneal. Puck is now cleared by Buffalo's Lindy Ruff. Route in pursuit, Wesley trying to get away from it. In the center ice to Joyce. Joyce over the line, right wing side. Stopping, cutting, check. Battling Rutu. Dug out by Neely. Neely for Kelvin. Cross for Wesley. And now it's cleared away by Krupp. Those are the kind of shots the Bruins have to take. I think Mike and Kelvin should have gotten that off because they had people out in front for the rebound. Kelvin back. Power play Boston there second. Along the line for Janney. For Kelvin. Kelvin misfired and Krupp gets it away to Napier. Napier trying to cut by. Wesley is broken up and back comes Kelvin on a break. A good lead pass for Janney. Janney over the line on Johansson. Holds it. Cuts. Still holds. Now waiting. Back to Bork. Bork for Janney. Janney moves it in. Pass to Janney. Oh, a give and go, beautiful. Janney behind the net. Swings away, gets it to Casper. Rolls back up the boards. Bork trying to keep it in. Does good play. Gets it to Janney. Janney to Casper. Casper to Fusa. Back in front. Janney. Shot. Shot. And for a slay man. And Janney couldn't get it from Barrasso as it tantalized. He laid outside the crease. And Barrasso able to cover. Great yeah, good power play. You know, I'd like to make a comment. When this starts, Craig Janney, everybody left. He went over the blue line, him and four Sabres. He turned, held on to it, held on to it to set all this up. And I tell you, it was amazing that he can hold on to the puck that long. Right there, he just can't get around the net in time. He doesn't think at first that Tom Barrasso, he thinks it's a defenseman gathering it in because he doesn't have his stick. Just couldn't get to it. Well, that was a great save by Barrasso. Boy, the two goaltenders have both come up with big saves here in the early going. 23 seconds left on the Boston power play. Face off to the right of Barrasso. No score. 10.48 left first period. Boston five shots. Buffalo one. But that one by Buffalo 
was something you dream about. Johansson walking right in. Around the boards, misfiring. And it's kept in by Bork at the line. Bork along with the line. Gets it away to Lindsman. Lindsman holding. Now, still holding. Across. Score by Wesley. Lindsman to Wesley. A power play goal. And Wesley makes it 1 0 Boston. That hurts. Just a few seconds left. Earlier on the power play, they tried to work that with Kluzak. Only it was blocked going across. They came right back with it with Wesley. A heads up play by Lindsay right here. Wait, finds Leslie. Wesley, but right there, that saber in the slot broke his stick. Leakey handed it to him. Tucker gave him the stick. He doesn't have the stick. Lindsay spots that, slides it right by his feet. Look how far Barrasso comes out, too, Derek. Is Right there, as Lindsman started to move in, Barrasso started to come out. That left the net the short side open for Wesley. Averageck broken up by Peterson. Number 77. Knocked away. Now over the line comes Tucker and Polino. Polino clears it in. And Kluzak. Well, wait a minute. No, no. Behind the play might be Byers. Yep. Not Byers for a cross check. They may have gotten him for roughing, Derek. With the score, Boston won. Buffalo nothing. Back of the garden in a moment. Among other things, New England is known for its tough customers. Well, there's only one way you deal with customers like that. Give them the best deal possible. For instance, now, at your New England Ford dealer, you can get a great deal on a sporty Ford Mustang LX. You can get a $750 cash bonus. And if you combine that with the special option package savings, you can save over $1,500 in all on one of the hottest cars around. Deals like that are what make your local Ford dealer number one in New England. Lyndon Myers is going to be called for roughing behind the play. Right there, he's, he's tied up along the boards right now. He's got him. Hasn't done anything else. He's got a punch in the back Th of the head. There it was. Punched in and give him a backhander. Okay, deservedly so. Lyndon was hoping that John Tucker would go with him, but Tucker wisely backed off. I Bork would back trying off to clear it. Too. Kept in by Housley at the right point. First power play for Buffalo. Tucker broken up by Kluzak, and it's cleared by Casper. Boston with two power plays, and they have a score by Glenn Wesley with six shots for Boston, one for Buffalo. Housley winds up on their power play. Behind the defense, Andrew Chuck. And Housley wraps it in around the board, fought four, kept in by Andrew Chuck. Tall man and good stick handler. Back to Tucker. Up to Andrew Chuck again. Tucker is at the point. High pass across, and it's kept in. Now in front of the net, knocked away by Fork. Fork spills a man behind the net. Kluzak trying to get a handle to it. Can't. Kicked away. Nobody getting. Finally, Burridge uh, does. Out to Casper. Casper in the center ice and slides it in the Buffalo end. And a change by Terry O'Reilly. Oh, we've had more broken sticks in this game. About three already. Christian Mutu starts back. Clears it in. And then they dropping it. For Telvin, he's got some open ice and clears it out. Telvin is on with Wesley. Wesley has the score. A power play. Boston leads 1 0. It was set up by Lindsman and Bork on Boston's second power play. Owsley away to Rutu. Rutu, the clear end, wide of Lindman, softly enough. Turgeon moving in. Now it's Wesley trying to clear it, but Owsley kept it in. Off for Ruff. Ruff in the Turgeon. Turgeon in the corner. Shepard is out there, too. Turgeon, some good moves. Wheels it around for Rutu. Back to Owsley. The shot. Scores! Owsley, a power play goal. Into the corner to tie it at one. Twice, Kenny Lindsman almost had that puck once for a breakaway. Boy, a lot of traffic out in front of level right as there, this that shot goes. was under the Lindsman stick. Glad you get to see it. Just a perfect yep. pinpoint shot. He sure did see it, Derek. Look at how He's it opens up. He's going to hit it in off the corner. Going to nail the post. Right off the post. It, his foot gets it. The tire, his blocker gets it. It just was the perfect height. An excellent shot. Well, he's the guy they're going to be looking to to be the leader. They'll ask Barrasso to keep him in it and ask Housley to lead him at the other end. That's playoff goal number one. Housley the score from Rutu and Turgeon, a power play. Tied at one. There was just a second shot. In deep, a hard hit by Sweeney. Oh, Sweeney hit Riki. A tremendous chip. 
And Shoebottom clears it up. Knocked away by Krupp. Taken over now by Gillies. Gillies moves it in deep for Hartman with Smith in front. It's broken up. Rolls back to Krupp. Long shot. The flex wide. Moving up is Riki, who took that big hit. Now Byers after him. Shoebottom around the boards. But it's knocked back in deep. And Sweeney wraps Hartman. Byers gets it away for Shoebottom. Shoebottom. Now it's Miller back for Sweeney. Sweeney going deep. Sweeney puts it in front. Knocked away by Riki at the last second. And Hartman clears it out to Smith. Line change Buffalo. Smith broken up by Bork. Bork right back. Winding up again as Boston changes up. Way to Kuzak. A lead for Neely. Too far. Neely and Ruff go to the corner. Neely trying to get it. It's knocked around the boards. Hartman able to clear it out. One to one the score. Each team with a power play goal. Priestley winding up for Buffalo. Boston six shots. Buffalo two. Lawrence trying to get an offense going again. Kuzak clears it in. And Ruff trying to wheel it right out. Arneal checked by Bork. Face-off call by Kahoski, maybe a hand pass. And a lot of jamming now. And now back to the studio, Tom Larson, the NHL update. Great sign that is. Thank you, Fred, and we have a report from Montreal. You're going to like it. The Whalers jump out in front. Randy Latasseur scores for Hartford. Rua with the initial save. It trickles through. The Whalers lead Montreal one to nothing. This update brought to you by Budweiser. Watch this. Well, don't you just love that score? And Here's this what this game, this is Stanley Cup. Whoa. Bob Sweeney, and then Hartman takes a run at Sweeney at the other end, and Sweeney cleaned him. Bob Sweeney is such a tall guy. You can't leave your feet on him. You're coming up to his level where he can get good leverage good on leverage. you. Good leverage. If he sees oh, you. Now, oh. Fred mentioned earlier, a lot of broken sticks. That's the intensity the game gets played with. You just take every check, finish it right off. Bob Sweeney almost knocked out Hartman at the other end. With another hard check. Fires nailed Clark Gillies at the blue line. Bruins are playing their style of game right now, although it is 1-1. Bruins trying to deliver a message here in the first period, and that is, this is our building. You're going to play our style. Boston 1 and Buffalo 1, 7-14 left in the first period. Each team with a power play goal. Kuzak, hard shot and saved by Barrasso. Barrasso clears it out, but Kuzak with it. Now four. Tipped on the play is McCarthy. A penalty on Buffalo. This is the third power play for Boston. And they have two good ones as Felino is out for tripping McCarthy. Mike Felino, Tom McCarthy broke as soon as Bork got the puck. He was going to be in pole by himself. Felino had to haul him down. We hope he get away with it. In the right hand corner of your screen, he's going to break right here. There he goes, tripped him, he had him beat. McCarthy would have been all alone. Stanley Cup is so much more intense. They don't turn it up a notch. They turn it up, you know, hell bent for leather. Nobody, no holes barred. The Bruins are up to seven shots on Barrasso. Two for Buffalo, but the game is tied at one. Lindsman out with Casper on the left, McCarthy on the right. With the Bork and Kuzak. And the battle inside the line, Bork. Trying to move on it. He's held off by Ramsey. A lot of holding there. Finally, Casper keeps it in. Casper in front. Blocked by Barrasso. Lindsman. Oh, what a save. Barrasso there as Casper put it right in front for Ken Lindsman. Ken, Kenny Lindsman, three guys <laughs> converged on him. After he got the shot away, he tried one tap at it, then decided to defend himself. Figured Barrasso had it. <laughs> Boy, any one of these guys could have given up on this. McCarthy, when he was checked at the blue line, Ray Bork keeping it in. Then Casper takes off, gives it a good look, and there's Lisbon with position. But Barrasso makes a nice stop. Now he's got three guys converging on him there. Nice play. Stevie Casper gets this away quick. Just Tommy Barrasso got down in time. Kenny tried one quick swipe before he get killed. Draw to Bork. Bork along the line. Off for Lindsman. Lindsman a screenshot. Save Barrasso. Lindsman tries it again. It is blocked. And cleared out now by Rutu. Tommy McCarthy's playing some kind of hockey in front of that net. Boston up to nine shots. They've had a couple on this power play. This is their third power play. One to one. 
Bork drives it in. Back is Ramsey. He's able to sweep it right out. Bruins have to clear the zone. Yanni looking for skating room. Huzak wraps it in, but Johansson has it. Around the boards, knocked out again. Way to Casper. Casper for Kuzak over the line, holding. He's broken up. And the puck cleared out by Johansson. Down to 50 seconds left on Boston's third power play of the night. In a 1-1 game, they have a power play goal by Wesley, matched by Housley's. Bork trying to get it going. Bruins having trouble. Now Janney over the line. Holds it. In deep for Joyce. Janney gets it back. Janney. In for Joyce. Joyce swings it back to Bork. Bork. Put one in deep. Knocked around and into the stand. The faceoff will be in the Buffalo zone. 21 seconds left on the Boston power play. Seems to me, Derek, that uh, Buffalo's strategy when Craig Janney gets the puck. Don't pay any attention to the puck. Just try to go right through the man. Take the body right away. And Janney's quick enough to sidestep that if he can just control the puck. He has gotten a lot of attention in this first period. First when you've got Cam He's going to get a lot of yeah. attention for the next 15 years. You've got Cam and Bob Joyce on your line, though. You know you're in good company. 521 left. Yeah, and he got the draw, but it went right back into the Buffalo bench, and the faceoff is called again in the Buffalo zone to the left of Barrasso. Janney, Joyce, and Neely with Wesley and Telvin. Nine shots, Boston, two for Buffalo, but tied at one. Smith on the faceoff for Buffalo. He is waved out. Napier will take it. Janney could beat him. Setting the rules early. Everybody get back in the lines where you're supposed to. Sweet Knocks trying to get some, establish some respect out there. Bruins get it. Trying to keep it in. They do. Back for Wesley. Wesley, a shot in. Picked off by Barrasso. That's the best he could do. Janney and Joyce worked it back to Wesley. 11 seconds left on the power play. Good move on Glenn's part. Really didn't have a play out there. And you know, if he put it on goal, Barrasso would be forced to hold on to it and get a face off. At least get that out of it. What he was hoping that nearly hadn't turned the direction, been forced to turn the direction he did. But Cam could have got a stick on that. He only was looking for a deflection. Tucker and Janney on the face off now to the right of Barrasso. 11 seconds left on the power play for Boston. And a mix up. Knox will face him off again. That cost a second. A second ticked off on that. Craig Janney and John Tucker. Win cleanly for Wesley. Wesley's pass up stopped by Krupp, though. And he clears it all the way down near Lemlin, and the penalty is up. Telvin with it. Five minutes left in the first period. Tied at one. Bruins able to work it out to center ice, but that's all. Wesley trying to make a play. Hit by Polino. Puck in deep. Tucker and Neely go for it. Neely. Up the boards and out. Joyce trying to break with it. Can't do it. Loose puck picked up by Telvin. Telvin over the line. Force deep by Felino. Holding. Puts it in front. Wesley can't reach it. Neely trying to keep it in. Fell down. Andrichuk clears it out. And a penalty coming up as Andrichuk was spilled. And a hooking call. And Buffalo will have a power play. This copyrighted program is brought to you under pay cable TV rights, granted by the Boston Bruins, solely to the entertainment of our viewing audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of the accounts and descriptions of this game, without the express written consent of the week, a little frustration on Cam's part. He just set Andrew Chuck down and skated right to the penalty box. <laughs> no questions asked. He was headed there before the whistle blew. Well, he knew that as soon as he did it. Cam's here. Now, he had, he had the right move going around him. But I think Andrew Chuck took a bit of a dive on that. He turned well, Cam and had, it out on him. Cam had the right skate behind uh, Andrew Chuck's left and then gave him the stick up on the chest and brought him back. As soon as you feel that, you just bail right out and fall, and you'll get it nine out of ten times. 
second Buffalo power play. They scored on a 55 footer by Housley on a power play. They have just two shots. Boston has 10. The Bruins got seven of those shots on power plays. And Turgeon snaps it in. Blocked by Lemlin. Lemlin trying to clear it around the dasher. Kept in by Housley. He's great at that point position, but now Fluzak breaks it up on him. Housley winding up. Playing with Ramsey. Housley gets away from Casper. Breaks to center ice, over the line. Pass into Turgeon. Turgeon in the corner. Now gets it back for Shepard. Turgeon. Shepard moves it near the net, broken up by Bork. And uh, in the corner, that was Rutu and Shepard with uh, Turgeon setting up in front of the net. One twelve left on the power play. They stay out there. Rutu, Shepard. Here comes Housley. The drive around the board. Shepard and Rutu going for it. Rutu has it to Shepard behind the net. He centers it, but right on the stick of Lindsman, and Lindsman clears it. 50 seconds left on the Buffalo power play. 3.15 left in the first period. 1-1 one, one the score. Lindsman out with Marquardt. Krupp starts it back. Center ice gets it up to Andrichuk. Away to Tucker. Couldn't break in with it. Broken up by Telvin, and the puck is cleared by Lindsman. 30 seconds left. Johansson over to Krupp. Krupp drives it around the board. Fought for it. Kept in by Johansson. Johansson to Krupp. Hard shot to save Lemon. A blast. And that's only the third shot by Buffalo. Lindsman, a careful play to tip it out. Buffalo with three shots in the game, and it's tied at one. Uh, that was a blast by Krupp. He let it go from 40 feet. At the Boston end, Kluzak breaks it up and clears it. No icing. The Bruins kill off the penalty. Just the one shot by Krupp. 2.20 left. And breaking now is Hartman. A shot and a save by Lemlin on the short side. And a face-off in the Boston end. 2.17 left in the first period. The shots are 10, Boston, 4 for Buffalo. Well, if you're keeping uh, track of the quality opportunities, it, it would be 3-3 in shots. Three of the Lemonland saves were just point blank blasters and right here it may be well out but this puck had a lot of a lot of power on it just gets a blocker on it. However he could see it all the way. Well, he saw Housley's too but it just happened to, it happened to be in the perfect spot. Smith on the face off with Sweeney one to one the score two seventeen left first period. Buffalo doing what they want. Staying within range and see what happens. Trying to make something happen now around the boards. Byers on it. Can't clear it. Ruff puts it right back in front block. And uh, Byers and Gillies going at it. That figured to happen. Clark Gillies and Lyndon Byers. Clark Gillies, over the years, probably one of the premier fighters in this game. And Lyndon Byers, kind of the heir apparent here. Two big, strong men. I wouldn't want to fight either one of them under any circumstances. So they go out for battling in the uh, corner with 2.06 left in the first period. Matter of fact, they head for the dressing room. Lyndon Byers, they lose on the exchange. Clark Gillies isn't going to do anything offensively as a rule. Lyndon Byers has the potential to do a lot. Buffalo penalty to number 90, Clark Gillies. Boston penalty number 34, Lyndon Byers. Five minutes 84 fighting. Right there. The Lyndon knew he was coming. Clark Gillies up around his face. That was a fight about 15 feet before the contact was made. Five each for fighting. The teams are at full strength. We're looking at Ted Sater, who's done a superb job with the Buffalo team this year. Last two years, they did not make the playoffs. He really wasn't responsible for last year. He came in late, replacing uh, Scotty Bowen. But this year, he's brought him along solidly in third place in the Adams division. 
face off outside the Boston line. A lot of credit has to go to Ted Sater. He's done a remarkable job. He did a remarkable, a remarkable job in New York as well. But they in New York wanted that offensive team and they thought they was a little boring with his style, but it wins hockey games. On the draw, Calvin trying to break. Clears it up over the Buffalo line. And another fight going. Jay Miller and Hartman. They have fought before. I don't know why people want to take him on. Jay Miller, just one tough customer. Hartman getting somewhat of a reputation. Pretty tough boy himself. Five each for fighting Miller and Hartman. All this is distracting Boston from its mission. They had mission accomplished with the penalty killing. An excellent job the last time. As they need to crank up that offense that they had going pretty well. And uh, uh, Buffalo just uh, keeping them at bay more or less. You look at ten shots for Boston. But seven of them have come on the power play. And the power plays have worked pretty well. And Terry O'Reilly sends out Janney Neely. And Joyce now with Telvin and Wesley with just about two minutes left in the period. Ruff and Housley. Clear to the Boston end. Could be, no, they wave off the icing. Back to get it, Telvin. Around the boards and taken by Janney. Janney center ice, a lead from Neely too far. Neely goes on Ruff. Tucked into the corner, Janney there. Janney checked in the play. Arneal just drops it out. Napier going for it. Gets it over the line to Housley. Housley ridden off by Joyce. Bruins trying to come back. Check. Lutu drives it back in. Wesley, who has the Boston goal, gets it away to Janney. To Joyce. Joyce over the line. Checked by Housley on a stick check. And Napier just clears it. Tucker and Telvin. Tucker gets it. Broken up. Now centers it. Now it's knocked behind the net. Polino. Bangs in the Cluzak. Polino gets it. Wraps it around the board. Moving up is Riki. Riki is hit. Puck goes deep. Tucker behind the net. Into the corner. And he is hit by Cluzak. Janney gets it away for Calvin. And a penalty coming up. A board check. A charging on Neely as he ran into Polino. And it will be a power play for Buffalo. Their third. Well, let's see if, yeah, it's, indications are just Neely for charging. Buffalo has had two power plays, and they've had two shots, and on one of them they scored, so the game is tied at one. Cam Neely wants, he wants Felino from here. He sees him down, he's upset that he's down. Now he's getting up, Felino sees him. But we don't want anything to do with him. He knew at that point Neely had a penalty. Smart play on Felino's part. Buffalo now gets its third power play of the period, and that will match Boston's opportunity. Kenny Lindsman over talking to Felino. There's Larry Ness, one of Boston's uh, trainers. Jim Narrigan, Bob Crocker. Bob Joyce shaken up. Back up on his skates, though. Casper and Burridge. Now, Joyce is back up, but he's headed for the dressing room. Huck, 42 seconds left in the period. And Housley winding up. He has the Buffalo score. Drives it around the corner. Polino going for it. Burridge. And Kuzak gets it. Kuzak, a lead for Casper. Broken up by Housley. Oh, what a hit. Polino took from Kuzak. 
Oh, Kuzak lined him up from uh, 20 feet away, it seems. That's One. a little get-even time for when Felino lined up Kuzak and Buffalo. A long shot by Housley. A hard hit on the boards. Andrew Chuck lost it. And the period ends. Ray Bork tagged Andrew Chuck. But starting the second period, Buffalo will have a power play. This is a hockey game, Fred, that I'm glad I'm up here. Boston 10 shots, Buffalo 5. The score at the end of the first period, Boston 1 and Buffalo 1. And we'll be back with animation highlights in just a minute. Shop in the tallies. Frame shave. Dave, we're going to show you this situation where uh, one of the breaks, uh, which is this game is all about. A bad break for the Sabres, good one for the Bruins. You're going to have Ricky come behind the net, take a swipe at the puck. Right there, now his stick fractures. His stick is broken down there, down below on the bottom of the screen. Doesn't get anything on it. At this point, Lindsman's going to get the catch up with the puck. Punches it through, back to the point to Bork. Now Bork's gonna go across. Now he's gonna turn back. McCarthy goes to the net. Lindsman's gonna stay right over here. He's got the puck. Out comes Ricky to Lindsman. Goes down. That's a mistake. He holds it. You got Wesley coming in here. That's where he's gonna get the goal from. Super little play. Big break on a broken stick. It is a power play for Buffalo. Their third continuing as we start this period. Number two, game tied at one. And 105 left on the Buffalo power play. Housley very much in evidence in this game. He has scored the goal. He clears it in. Going for it, Kuzak. Up the boards and not out. Big play by Johansson to keep it in with Rutu. Rutu slams it in, a backhander. Missed by Andrichuk, by Shepard. Now it's kept in by Rutu. Rutu with Turgeon and Shepard. Holding, shooting, deflected wide. Bruins able to clear it. Good play by Burridge off the boards. 35 seconds left on the Buffalo power play. And each team will have three power plays if the Bruins try to handle this one. Bounces near the net. Kluzak able to clear it off the boards by Johansson. 20 seconds on the Buffalo power play. Lindsman is out now with Marquard. On defense, Wesley and Telvin. Owsley the Turgeon, he missed it. Marquard clears it. He'll just about do it. caught Mike Ramsey a tremendous hit <laughs> around the boards now Lindsman going for it but icing called against Boston the Bruins are out hitting Buffalo but the game is tied and uh, Buffalo in that power play only one long shot by Housley from center ice oh that was a 10 pointer right there Derek that hit by Nevin Mark but I think he got Ramsey leaving his feet this is in there this is Ramsey sees it coming Mark for it. Oh. the Cam Neely variety there. <laughs> Nevin Mike, loves to hit, too. <laughs> Mike tried to get up into low 16. No, no, I'm going to get it. <laughs> Once your feet are committed in hockey, when you're skating, you can't get out of the way. Start flapping. Jump out, <laughs> whack, kind of lap your uh, arms a little bit, flap them, and hope you can get airborne. Tucker out, and uh, for the Bruins, Peterson is playing right defense. Now, he hasn't played it all season long. No. And basically, is uh, Kluzak is on with him, and the draw is back to Krupp. Quick wrist shot deflected by Tucker and missed the net. Nearly out with Jenny. That's it to Kluzak. Kluzak clearing in. And taking over is Riki. He's on defense with Krupp. Up the boards. Cleared to the Boston end. They wave off the icing. Back is Peterson. Tucker after him. Peterson trying to get away. Checked by Felino and Tucker. Janney there. Janney comes out with it. Janney breaks with Joyce. Janney on Riki going deep, stopping, looking for a trailer, looking for Neely. He couldn't get it. And back comes Andrichuk. Andrichuk is hit by Wesley and broken up. Telvin gets it away to Janney. Janney back again over the line. Trying to stick handle and he loses it. Johansson with it. And hit by Neely. Smith gets it clear. Gets it to Andrichuk. 
Andrzejczyk gets by Wesley, holds on the boards, picks up the trailer and doesn't hit him with it. Smith, Mike Ramsey, drives it away, picked up by Telvin. Bounces at center ice. And Housley knocks it away. Arneal is back for Buffalo. A lead in for Smith. Checked on the play. Telvin goes to the corner. What for there? Crowder, Arneal. Arneal gets it. Checked by Wesley. Gets away from Wesley. In the corner. Now kicks it around the boards. Crowder goes for it. Napier has it. Napier back to the point. And the shot missed the net. Long drive by Ramsey. Kept in by Housley. Housley. Cross for Smith. Smith hit. Puck rolls back. Ramsey a drive. Deflected wide. Bruins pinned in. And now breaking out. Crowder. One on one with Ramsey. Drops it for Bork. Bork in. Red shot. Raven waits. Snap. God. Well, Bork pump. Wind it up. There we go. Never got it as high as I really thought he did. He no, it didn't. It looked like it may have gone between the uh, right yeah. into the armpit. Just missed the body. This angle is so hard to tell how high a puck is. But yeah, that's the area right around the shoulder. Buffalo clears it, looking for Shepard. Shepard breaking over the line, in deep, checked by Kluzak. Turgeon trying to keep it in, it's poked away. Now goes to Kluzak behind the net. Kluzak away to Bork. Bork has figured in both goals. Up for Burridge, who's checked by Krupp. Kluzak working it free for Burridge. Burridge breaks it out, flips it in wide of Barrasso. Back is Priestley. And he almost hit the referee, Kahoski, clearing it away. Backward shoe bottom. Icing call. Four minutes played. The goal is Ray Bork from Crowder and McCarthy. With the score of Austin 2, Buffalo 1, Bruins hockey will continue in a moment. Ray Bork almost had to dive off the ice. That puck hits him. It's too many minutes. So Gordy jumps. And he missed the door. <laughs> Boston line is Jenny, Neely, and Joyce. Two to one Boston. Four minutes played, second period. Boston 11 shots, Buffalo five. Tucker and Jenny. Back to Neely. Neely's shot blocked, and Buffalo breaks it out. Johansson. Away to Tucker. He's broken up on a poke check by Telvin. Bruins have shoe bottom. Rookie uh, up from Maine Mariners. He's just played in a couple of games for them. He's on defense with Telvin. Bruins trying to come out. Telvin. Finally able to clear it all the way down to the Buffalo end. Barrasso there. He clears it out. Janney with it. Janney over the line. Miss Fires. Takes a stick. A high stick. Here's the, the line. Here's the time. Bite your lip. Johnny yeah. McKenzie did that one night in the Stanley Cup. Got a high stick. Wasn't cut, so he bit his lip. Started the bleeding. And away you go. We got the five-minute major. I remember the night John Koharski was working Buffalo in Hartford. Moscoli took a butt head from Corey Robertson that cut him from the I side of the eye, past the nose, and down seconds. across the mouth onto his chin. Bleeding terribly, and Koharski said, no, you bit yourself to throw blood. And only gave him two. <laughs> See, Johnny McKenzie put the referee's hip down. Yep. Boston's fourth power play of the game. Boston leads two to one on goals by Glenn Wesley and Ray Bork and uh, Phil Housley for Buffalo. All the defensemen have scored. Ray Bork has a goal and an assist. Bork is on with Wesley on the power play. Lindsman with Casper and McCarthy. Ray Bork 
Drives it in. Ricochets around. Casper. Lindsman. Lindsman trying to make the play from the boards. It's checked by Rutu. Hard hit by Lindy Ruff. Kept in by Wesley. Lindsman. McCarthy. McCarthy goes behind the net. Back in the point to Bork. Bork. Back for McCarthy. Wheels it across for Wesley. Turnaround shot block. Rolls in. And Wesley able to keep it in at the point. Good play. Lindsman trying to put it in front for McCarthy. He's checked. Prep around the boards. Clears it. Bruins have had some good power plays. They came about in the first half of that first period. The only shot in this period was the break in by Bork, and he converted to make it two to one Boston. Joyce back. Drives it around. Neely is on. Neely into the corner for Joyce behind the net. Trying to put it in front. It is blocked as it was missed by Jenny, and it's cleared by Johansson. Wesley winding up. Jenny. The drive in. Joyce trying to keep it in. Does. Checks in the corner. Has it. Jenny there. Jenny for Bork. Back up for Joyce. Now to Neely. Neely back for Joyce. Nobody in front, though. Nobody in front of the net. And the puck is cleared by Riki. Ray Bork winding up. Barron in the center ice. Over the line. He stopped. And it's knocked away by Napier. Not a good power play by Boston. Telvin winding up, and the power play just about up. Two to one, Boston leads. 13 34 left in the second period. Bob Sweeney now. Over the line. Drives it in deep. Kept in by Marquardt. Fires. Quick shot. He missed the net. Best setup for Boston. Peterson in the Sweeney. Sweeney behind the net. Marquardt. A check on Riki. Housley able to dig it out. Clear it away. And a break by Tucker. Tucker check. Broken up. Great play by Peterson. And away comes Sweeney. Sweeney for Byers, and he taps it in. Full strength Buffalo, they killed off the power play. Boston's had four, Buffalo's had three. Polino knocked down again by Kuzak, and it's Byers. Marquardt, save for Rasso. Oh, Marquardt walked right in. And a cross check as Ruff is knocked down. Going to get Lyndon Byers, and he Lyndon did clean Ruff's clock good that time. Back to the studio, Tom Larson, NHL update. Thank you, Fred. The Hartford Whalers have grabbed a 1-0 lead to the first period on Randy Lottisour's goal, but the Canadiens have come back. Shane Carson scores 2.54 the time of the second period, and we have word that Canadiens have scored again and lead 2-1. to one. This update brought to you by Budweiser. And only seven minutes, 14 seconds. Well, Austin Lyndon Byers would like Byers to think he didn't put a cross check cross on second. Lindy Russ. But Linden followed the play into the crease after uh, Nevin Marquardt had cleared out. Ruff was coming through, and uh, watch, watch Byers. He'll be trailing number 22 in through the crease. Great save. He went upstairs on him, too. Great save by Barrasso. Linden Byers never really popped him, pushed he, him more than anything. He did take the right hand off the stick, Derek, as he made contact. You're right. On the faceoff, Turgeon with it. He loses it to Kluzak. Turgeon has just played on the power plays. Kluzak clears it up the middle. Burridge and Casper with Bork and Kluzak. Boston leads 2-1. to 12.30 left in the second period. Goals by Wesley and Bork. Housley for Buffalo. Here's Housley. He thrives on a power play. He has scored a power play goal. Around the boards, jammed up Shepard. Casper, it's back to Housley. Housley in for Turgeon. Turgeon to Housley. To Turgeon. In to Shepard. Rutu anchored near the net. Turgeon. The Shepard again. And they keep it in territorially. Turgeon back for Housley. Or Turgeon. His shot blocked. And a great play by Casper and Kluza. They just nullified Turgeon. And when he elected the shoot, it was blocked. A minute left on the Buffalo power play. Housley back. Linsman is on. Up to Andrichuk, and he's offside at the line. Pretty close. Looked onside to me. He's got that long reach that it can be deceptive. Oh, that's right. Okay, good. Two line offside. Yeah. 
fast came from back. I'm stand corrected. Referees are always right in what's our line. Boy, Nevin came close to equaling his season output in the goal department. Snapped it upstairs. Russell made a great save on it. He was down. And Nevin went uh, topside. Just a great pair of gloves on Tommy Barrasso. Boston leads 2-1, to 11.38 left in the second period. 52 seconds left on Byers' penalty. Linsman with Marquardt, Wesley, and Telvin. Power play for Buffalo. Housley to Tucker. Tucker has problems, and he fell down. Johansson winding up now. Drives it in around the boards. Andrew Chuck going for it. Takes a hit. Bruins can't clear it. Housley kept it in. Great play and then lost it to Wesley. All right, Housley has a million moves at that point, but his pass up this time knocked away by Wesley. 20 seconds on the Buffalo power play. Two to one Boston. Johansson drives it around the boards. Bork puts it around the other side. Burridge going for it. And he knocks it by Johansson. Winding up is Andrew Chuck. Five seconds left. Casper rides him off. His Bork breaking over the line. Fires, saves, and almost the score by Burridge on the rebound. And a penalty holding on Buffalo. Randy Burridge. We're in the second period. The score of Austin two at Buffalo one. A lot of things, Derek, can happen when you shoot the puck on that. Most of them are good. True. You know, Burridge right there for the rebound. Grasso comes up with the save, but being held up. Uh, Held off his trouble. I think the Bruins feel that he gives up. When he gives up rebounds, they're usually out in front. And they've got to have people going to the net. Back to Bork from Janney. Bork along the line is broken up by Smith. Ray Bork has figured in both goals, an assist and a goal. In deep, Janney trying to get it. Can't do it. Sabres break it out. Hendy Russ putting it in the Boston end all the way to Lemley. Lindlin handed it around to Napier. Now the Bruins started out. Ray Bork, a lead for Neely, maybe too far. Neely keeps it in with a great play. Trying to cut in front. Kent snapped around the boards and cleared out by the Sabres. Fifth Boston power play. The Sabres have had four, and they have only three shots. But one of them went in. It was Housley's. Boston leads two to one. One ten left. Ray Bork. Drives it in. Linsman hustles around. Gets it. Near the net. Drops it back for Bork. In for Neely. Shot. Say Barrasso. And that was headed for the short side. Back to the studio. Tom Larson. NHL update. Thank you, Fred. The Toronto Maple Leafs bidding for a little bit of an upset in game one of their division semifinal series. Borye Salming's goal at 14.31 of the first period gives Toronto a 2-0 lead over the favored Detroit Red Wings. This update brought to you by Budweiser. Don't tell me Toronto's going to do it again in the opening round. I thought they only haunted Chicago. I'd love to see Toronto upset them. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? 9.39 left, second period, 2-1 to one Boston. 57 seconds left on this fifth Bruins power play. They've had some good ones and had some shots, particularly early, the first three. Sweeney is out with uh, Lindsman and McCarthy. Wesley and Kluzak face off to the right of Barrasso. Islanders lead over New Jersey, 1-0. McGraw Wesley, the shot. What a stop wow. by Barrasso with McCarthy screening. You tell me how he saw that. That must be a heat-seeking puck. Uh, you're going to see the replay. Tommy Barrasso could get his head around McCarthy. Watch the top of your screen. He's peeking. He hasn't seen it yet. Stick his arm out. Went right in his glove. Unreal. You're right, Derek. You didn't see that. He it peeked was in for the, the timing, and then he just stuck his hand out, figuring the percentages, and picked it off. Wow. Big face-off won by Lindsman for that shot by Wesley, and now Bork is out there with Kluzak. And the draw back to Bork. Bork along the line. 
Kuzak, shot blocked. Sweeney keeps it in the corner. Back on the board for Kuzak. Kuzak along the line for Bork. In the corner for Lindsman. Lindsman gets it back from Kuzak. Now to Kuzak. A wrist shot in. Hoping for a deflection. It's not there. Lindsman tried to get it. Holding on Buffalo. No, or is it Sweeney? Sweeney out for holding. I'm quite sure that's the way the referee saw it. Score of Austin, two, Buffalo, one. Back at the Garden in a moment. In here a little bit, a little isolation. Puck comes loose. Bob Sweeney hooked his stick around. They're going to call him for holding. He never did anything. But his body was in the direction it looked like he did. Each team short a man. Janney out, rushing right wing side with Telvin. Over the line, he holds it, goes deep, goes deep in the corner against Ramsey, checked by Ramsey, hauled down. Crop in, lost it. Bruins, a shot by Bork, uh, by Joyce in a save. And the loose puck out to Shepard. Shepard breaks with Turgeon. A long lead, too far. Levelin knocks it away from Shepard. Bruins trying to come out with it. Wesley with it. Calvin is upended by Polino. 120 left now on the Buffalo power play. Bruins trying to get organized here. Housley is broken up. Casper breaking. Left wing side may break in. Casper short-handed. Steve Casper short-handed. Makes it Boston three in Buffalo one. What a great goal by Stevie Casper. Tommy Barrasso came out high. Had him all the way thinking he's going to shoot. Stevie Casper pulled him. Forced his legs open and tucks it through. What a great goal. Combination Burns and Casper. Well, it is a battle of willpower. Casper and Barrasso, which one's going to commit first? Randy Burns checks him right there. I mean, Ray Borg checks him right there. Now Barrasso's well on top of his trees. Fake pulls right between the legs. Tommy Barrasso, all he could do. Boy, you notice how Casper cut across to cut off Johansson so he could not play the puck on it. He protected the puck the whole time. Ray Bork gets another assist. He knocked it away from Housley. A shorthanded goal. Boston leads 3-1. to one. Kluzak able to clear it. A minute left on the Buffalo power play. In the center ice comes Johansson. Ray Bork, the assist. Bork trying to clear it. Down by Krupp. Burridge and Casper on with Kruzak and Bork. Casper, the shorthanded goal to make it 3-1 Boston. Short-handed goal for the Bruins. Krupp broken up by Casper, and the puck cleared away again. 30 seconds left on the Buffalo power play. 7.40 left, second period. Krupp drives it in. Around the boards. Luzak trying to sweep it out, can't. Johansson kept it in, broken up. Here comes Lindsman over the line. Lindsman looking for a trailer. Puts it to Luzak. A short-handed goal by Bob Luzak. Set up by Lindsman to make it 4-1 Boston. What a play by Kenny Lindsman. Dave, you want to talk? He's got great playoff credentials. But Kenny Lindsman, so cool. Waits for Gord Kluzak to catch up with him. And this time, Gordy didn't wait. Just snapped it off. Well, that Buffalo Vets look like they just went through shock therapy. Yeah, they're stunned. Wow. Watch Linsman hold on to this puck. I'd have liked to see him shoot it from there. Waits draws the defenseman group with him. Upstairs, four to one. Boy, Gordy made the right play, too. He didn't have time to do anything but one-time it. Just hit it on the fly. He knew Barrasso would be going to his left. He just shot it back to the right. There's the play. Lindsman buying Kluzak the time by turning outside. Wow. Well, wow, get go to the record books. Two shorthanded goals on one shift. And Buffalo still on the power play, but three seconds left now. Boston leads four to one. Playoff goal number one. Ruff drives it in. 
Around the board. Ray Bork on it. Full strength Boston. Bork to Casper. A high stick called here on Ray Bork. Bork out for high sticking. Back to the studio. Tom Larson, NHL update. Thank you, Fred. One more from the Patrick Division semifinals, that game between Washington and Philly at Philadelphia. Peter Zezel again is second to the game. 5-11 of the second period. The Flyers are up 2 to nothing on the Caps. This update brought to you by Budweiser. Ray Bork for high sticking. It is the sixth power play for Buffalo. Buffalo Sabres, 2-1 to one last power play, and they say to themselves, all right, let's tie this game up. The Bruins strike for two shorthanded goals. Got to rattle you a little bit, but this is a very big kill because of that. No, uh, no, that's... The draw is back to Kluzak, and he clears it. Boston 21 shots, Buffalo 6, Boston leads 4-1. to one. Two shorthanded goals and a power play goal. Owsley wraps it in. Tucker, Burridge, back for Ramsey. Ramsey to Housley. The shot, not, not clear. Rolls in, and Lemlin able to tie it up. Well, Fred, this is the fifth time in Stanley Cup playoff history for the Bruins that they have scored two shorthanded goals in a period. The last time they did it was against Minnesota How about, one, how about one shift? Well, that's what I'm looking for. I don't. Uh, we don't seem to have fastest shorthanded goals. Lemlin able to tie this up. A face off to the right of Lemlin. 135 left on the Buffalo power play. Boston goals by Glenn Wesley on a power play. Ray Bork. Then a couple shorthanded in one shift. Span of less than two minutes. Goals by Steve Casper and by Gord Kluzak. Linsman on the draw with Tucker. Tucker, Andrichuk, Polino, Ramsey, and Housley. Bork in the penalty box. Peterson is on. The draw behind the net. Kluzak broken up by Andrichuk. Back to Ramsey. Shot in. A save by Lemlin. Behind the net. Fought for Tucker trying to get it. Peterson there. It goes to Linsman. Linsman trying to backhand it out. Knocked down by Housley. Housley very tricky. Snaps it in. Block. And the rebound is... Knocked away, and after Chuck says, what happened? He was spilled. Linsman over the line on Housley. Runs right into Housley. And Buffalo starts it back. A power play, a minute left. They're sixth. They have lone goal as a power play goal. In the Foligno. Foligno behind the net. Around the boards, Turgeon. Checked by Burridge. Kept in by Housley. Poked away. Kept in by Andrichuk. A hand pass, Andrichuk. The Turgeon, the base off. Call by Koharski. Outside the line. 46 seconds left on the Buffalo power play. And six power play goals. They only have seven shots in the game with 5.45 left in the second period. Dave Andrichuk almost tucks this home. Watch him get hit after it. Right here, just couldn't get any wood on it. Al, Al Peterson. Peterson gives him whack Oof. for his trouble. Well, there's a cross check. If they're not short-handed, that's called. A legitimate, <laughs> legitimate National League cross check, that one. Casper out. He has a shorthanded goal. Over to Rutu. Rutu's pass up. Knocked away. Bruins clear it away to Wesley. Wesley drives it to the Buffalo end. The Bruins are conscious of trying to get a breakaway again. A shorthanded goal. Oh, you start to think like that once they start going in for you. 25 seconds left on the power play. Turgeon in the center ice by Wesley. Turgeon over the line. Shot. Scores! Persian all the way, center ice over the line, and beats Lemlin to make it four to two. It's a power play goal for the number one draft pick. Oh, he got rid of that quickly. He snapped that. I think surprised Reggie with that shot, Derek. Well, to watch Glenn Wesley right here in the center of your screen makes a move on him way early. Now everybody backs up and gives away the blue line. Peterson has to. He has no partner. A quick wrist shot. Buffalo Reggie goal. just missed his angle. Assisted by number three, Callie Yopantis. Wrist shot. Time of the goal, 14 minutes, 43 seconds. 
Well, that'll quiet the crowd down a little bit. Gets Buffalo right back in it at 4-2. Eight shots by Buffalo. They have two goals. The Bruins lead. And the pass over the line to Arneal is offside. 5.08 left in the second period. With the score of Austin 4, Buffalo 2, back at the Garden in a moment. I realized something when I started Solomon Tire many years ago. It wasn't enough to offer the best parts and tires. My customers expected more. They wanted to walk into a Sullivan Tire Family Car Care Center and be helped with personal family service. At any of our locations, you'll be treated with our family spirit because that's what Sullivan Tire is all about. Goodyear F32 all winter radials on sale, only $49.95 for the P155 ADR13. The score of 4 2 for Boston, Glenn Wesley a power play goal, Housley a power play for Buffalo, 1 1 at the end of the first, then Bork from Crowder. And Casper and Kluzak shorthanded goals to make it four to one. Turgeon back with a power play on a fine rush by the rookie to make it four to two. Puck clear to the Buffalo end. Riki drives it all the way, knocked away. Rutu with it. Good back checking by Janney. Janney trying to break here over the line with Joyce from Neely. Neely stops, cuts, and his shot went very wide. If indeed it was a shot, and a two on one. Rutu back, and the shot is blocked by Wesley. Boy, he had Nancy a wide open. The Bruins gave up a two-on-one. I think Cam was trying to hit Bob Joyce with a return pass that Bob was covered. Bob went to the net, thinking Cam would shoot. Cam just didn't think he had body leverage on that shot. He tried to figure to get away quick. Joyce went to the net. Bruins about shot Buffalo 21-8, Derek, but I still don't think they're shooting the puck enough. They could have had more shots. The one thing they're doing is to concentrate on Buffalo shooting, and that's yeah. important. Face off in the Boston zone, 433 left in the second period. The great play by Wesley. That was a 2 on 1 that the Bruins were giving up. Nobody checking back. Wesley alone, and he broke it up and deflected it into the stands. Smith is out with Hartman. Sweeney gets the draw to Bork. Bork has two assists and a goal. Jay Miller taps it out. Miller and Hartman ready to go. Here's a steal by Sweeney on Housley. Sweeney over the line. Broken up. The follow-up by Bork. Shot the save. The rebound. Buffalo's Hartman. Hartman clears it in. Back first is Shoebottom. Hartman is spilled. Shoebottom away to Jay Miller. Miller in the center ice. Housley there. Bumped off the puck by Fias. Sweeney over the line. Miller to Byers. Sweeney can't get back up. He is tied up on the play. In deep, Jay Miller has it behind the net. Swings it back in front. A save by Barrasso. Big scoring bit by Miller. In the center ice, Shoebottom intercepts. Clears it back in. Back is Lindy Ruff to take over. Ruff with 3.38 left in the second period. Boston leading 4-2. to Two, two short-handed goals, the difference. Bork back over the line. He's broken up. Luzak flipped it in the stands and a faceoff called outside the Buffalo line. Tune in to Nesson tomorrow afternoon at one as the Red Sox host the Detroit Tigers in the third game and the rubber game of this three-game series coverage beginning at 12.30 as Eric Reed brings you Red Sox Digest. And then at one, it's the Red Sox and Tigers live on Nesson. We deliver. Congratulations to the Red Sox who rallied today for a 6-5 win over Detroit. Lee Smith with his first save. Want to take a look at what Bob Sweeney's doing over here. He didn't have a stick on the ice. Right here now. See when Bob's coming around. It's going to come to him. Never got to it. He's tied up pretty good. Here we got some uh, Red Sox here. Jody Reed. Mike Greenwell on the left. 322 left in the second period. Four to two Boston. Wesley clears it out. Johansson drives it back in. Lundland drops it off for Telvin. Telvin to Wesley who has scored a goal. To McCarthy, center ice. 
He can't make it go. Pass up now, loose puck. McCarthy, he's over the line. That hit the shot, but he missed by a wide margin. Along the boards, the Bruins get all mixed up on it. And away comes Shepard. Shepard, the shot blocked by Wesley. Bruins getting careless on defense. Giving up opportunities. Here it's in the Shepard again. Shepard drops it back near the line. It's kept in by Johansson. Johansson checked on the play. Lindsman able to clear it out. And not ice it. 2.34 left, 4 to 2 Boston. Interception, Casper. Over the line to Burridge. Burridge put it right in the stick of Arneal. And a race now, Napier and Fork. And the fans yell, Napier really tag Fork. And back comes Casper with a threat. Casper over the line. Trying to cut in. Rolls it in. Uh, the puck is stopped by Barrasso. Not really a shot by Casper. But he made a fine rush and was sifting through the Buffalo defense. He was getting there. Somebody never concentrated on Casper's body. He'd have been in. Right here, watch Napier pull Bork's sweater from behind. Low talk. Sorry, Ray, I'm going to go ahead of you. <laughs> tough, tough chance to get by Bork. He'd have cut his legs off to stop it. Well, that should be a penalty. Two guys breaking for the puck. It is. It's interference. 207 left in the second period. Boston leads 4-2, and three of their defensemen have scored. Wesley, Bork, and Kluzak. Bork in addition with two assists. Ken Lindsman with two assists. And two shorthanded goals in span of just about over a minute by the Bruins on one shift. Steve Casper and Gord Kluzak. Janney out now with Joyce and Neely. Wesley and Bork. And Buffalo with it. In the center ice, stopped by Bork. Bork clears it away. Now interception by Gianni. Gianni trying to break, can't cut in. Napier starts it back. Napier to Arneal, off to Rutu. Rutu stops, looks for a trailer, and intercepted by Gianni's back checker. Gianni up over the Buffalo line. Offside is Joyce. As they tried to crisscross, and it didn't work. But Janney made a great play getting back to nullify the open man, Rutu. You gotta love Janney's defensive play, which everyone scouting him said, well, maybe he'll be a little lax defensively. Certainly hasn't shown it to me. He back checks awful well. He picks his man up once he sees absolutely no chance of offense. He turns, picks up his man, takes him all the way. And still concentrates on the puck, Brad. He's looking to pick off passes all the time. 142 left in the second period. Housley and Turgeon have power play goals for Buffalo. And Buffalo, nine shots so far in the game. Boston with 24, and the Bruins lead 4-2. to two. Lindsman, Sweeney, offside is... And wait a minute, Tucker is out. Well, Lindsman annoyed him, and uh, a slash on Tucker. Boy, that's... Uh you got to take a lot of punishment to establish this. Lindsman's already got Tucker set up. Little cross-check, gets away with it. Buffalo now it's penalty, fine. Number Oops, seven, John Tucker. John Two Tucker's got to take that. Flashing. That's part of the game. Penalty, That's pushing each other in the chest. Seconds. You don't come back with a retaliation with a slash. I, I can't see a penalty at all there. I can't see uh, uh, calling either. Either call both of them or don't call any, but... Uh, Pahosky's calling his game, and what he's doing is evening off from the penalties. He's getting up there. Buffalo seven power plays, so the Bruins have the same amount. Yeah. But if you want, <coughs> you want to advocate taking violence out of the game and slashing and sticks, you got to stop the stick swing, and you call those. So it is a power play for Boston. Bruins' first goal, a power play goal by Wesley, set up by Bork and by Lindsman. Lindsman with two assists. 139 left. Sweeney trying to keep it in. Sweeney misses, and Arneal is able to clear it out. Boston's outshot Buffalo almost a three to one ratio. Arneal and Rutu, the penalty killers. Lindsman breaks center ice, gains the line, and then is broken up by Ramsey.
Kuzak away. McCarthy has trouble with it. Now clears it in. And Ramsey right there. Fire it up, not out. Bork kept it in. And it's McCarthy along the line. Oh, Lensman. Lensman into Sweeney. One Sweeney. Sweeney holding in the corner. Trying to put it back for Bork. And he can't do it. Not a good play by Sweeney. And the puck is cleared by Arneal. 45 seconds left in the period. Bork's been out there. Quite a stretch. Bob Sweeney clears it in. The Bruins change up. Enrique on it. And the intensity missing. And not a good power play. Now it's off for Neely. Neely on it. And it goes high. Around the boards. Kuzak keeps it in. In deep for Neely. Neely trying to set it up. Can't do it. Broken up and the puck is cleared by Riki. 15 seconds left in the period. Up in the center ice it goes. Wesley, Janney, Neely. Shot to save for Rasso. A beautiful sparkling play. As time runs out, Neely coming in on the wing, set up by Janney and Wesley, but Barrasso made the stop. The Bruins, 25 shots, and Buffalo 9 through two periods of play, and a productive second period for Boston with three goals, two of them shorthanded. Boston, Boston, 15 shots, and Buffalo had four. After two periods, Boston four and Buffalo two. We'll be back at the Garden in just a moment. A strong forward checking team, and uh, we wanted to try to hold up their forwards and try to get the puck out as best we could. And, and we were doing that the first period, and we now it's becoming a, a specialty team hockey game. And uh, it seems like uh, you know we had one power play, and they had a power play right off the bat, and and we let down. We weren't backing up other players on our team, and uh, they scored two shorthand goals, and you know we can't let that happen. Well, first time uh, you guys went on the power play, you whistled one by Reggie Lemelin to square the game at one, which was an important goal at the time. We got you right back in it. You want to talk about it? Well, I think uh, well. Christian Rutu made a good play right here, and I just walked in and tried to let it go as hard as I could and fall in the corner. And I think it was a good play by uh, Christian Rutu and uh, Pierre moving the puck around, and that's what, what we want to do. We want to get that shot to the net and try to get some rebounds or tip-ins. Boy, in this shot, it looks like the C just opens up a path, a nice clear path for you. I was just trying to shoot it in the corner. He showed me a lot on that far side, and uh, I think he might have hesitated because Linsman's stick came right in front of my shot, and he might have let up a little bit, but... Uh, I just, you know, just trying to get the puck to the net is the, the big uh, thing on our club to get some rebounds or tip-ins. Well, it's been a couple of years since the Buffalo Sabres have been in the playoffs, and a lot of guys on this club were with you the last time you made it to the playoffs. Phil, how much is the experience or inexperience factor, do you feel? Well, we got 14 new guys on our team uh, from, from that last time we were in the playoffs, and it's been two years, so uh, it feels good to be here. Hopefully we can do some damage. That's... That's one of the key things that are going into our playbook. Uh, once we get in, we want to try to win a series or two and take it from there. Well, the Bruins have a few young players on their club, but certainly not as many as, as your team. As veterans, do you try to take some of the load off the kids, or are there just too many to try to do that? Well, uh, down the stretch, uh, we needed all 20 guys and more that the guys are injured right now, and I think we're going to need all 20 guys to win games. You know, we don't really have too many superstars on our team. We just try to grind it out and capitalize on our chances. It would appear that uh, you feed off of Tom Barrasso's energy. When he's on, it just seems to, to give everybody else a little more adrenaline. He's on. It's not the, not the fact that he's not playing well tonight. It's the fact that we're not covering up and, and, and playing smart in front of him. He's going to come up with the big saves. we just got to play well defensively. All right, Phil, thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Bill Housley, I guess. Let's go back to Tom. All right, David, 4-2 is our score at the end of two periods of play. We have the action highlights for you in that uh, second period and a look at what's happening in Montreal, too, in the semifinals, game one up there. More to come on tonight's Bruins Hockey on your New England Sports Network. Housley for Buffalo. The shots on goal in that first 20 minutes showed a 10-5 Bruins edge. 
In the second period, the Bruins' shots advantage continued. Five minutes into the period, Sabres still with only five shots on Reggie Lemelin. Second period highlights now. The Bruins go back in front. Ray Bork. Drops it for Bork. Bork in. Bruins had to feel pretty good about that one goal lead because Tom Barrasso was making some pretty remarkable saves, like this one that he never saw. Gloved it anyway. And check this. Penalty to Bob Sweeney. The Bruins score twice while shorthanded. Three-goal lead, second period. You got to feel fairly secure, right? Well, except that rookie Pierre Turgeon wrists one by Lemelin on a Buffalo power play. Buffalo's back within two. Shots at about this point showed Boston 24 and Buffalo 9. Other games tonight in the National Hockey League, of course, the one we are most interested in at the Forum in Montreal. Montreal Canadiens and the Hartford Whalers game one in theirs. And the situation stands in that one now at two to one Montreal. Bobby Smith. That was Carson's goal from Richet and Svoboda at 2.54 of the second period to tie the game at 1-1. And Bobby Smith now with the go-ahead goal for Canadiens less than two minutes later from Lemieux and Walter. And that one stands at 2-1. Montreal leading the Hartford, Canadi Hartford uh, Whalers after Hartford had jumped out to a 1-0 lead. They are just underway in the third period of play now. The others tonight in the Patrick in the Norris Division. Highlights and scores next. You are watching Bruins Hockey. Playoff hockey on your New England Sports Network. Second at 5-11, Samuelson and Crossman the uh, assist. It was Zezel with his own rebound scoring out in front. Washington gets on the board. Michael Pavanka scores at 12.05, deflecting one in from Stevens. And the score in that one is 2-1 Philadelphia now at the end of the second period. Jersey and the Islanders are tied at 1-1. They are still in the second period. Makala has scored for the uh, Islanders and it's Wolanin for New Jersey. Chicago and St. Louis just underway. It's 1-0 there. Later on, Los Angeles and Calgary, Winnipeg and Edmonton. 1-1, Bruins and Buffalo at the end of the first period of play. And in the second period, the Bruins ran out to a 4-1 lead on a goal by Ray Bork at 3-16 from Crowder and McCarthy. And then at 11-38 came the two shorthanded goals. Casper shorthanded from Ray Bork. And then at 12-35, less than a minute later, Kluzak on the same shorthanded situation that made it four to one boston at 1443 though buffalo on another power play and pierre turgeon gets his first of the playoffs and the second for buffalo for the night four to two the score and that's where it stands now at the end of two periods of play shots on goal are 25 to nine bruins and their lead is four to two so the third period now and once again back to boston garden we go fred cusick dave Shea and Derek Sanderson. Okay, what we have out here, Fred, is you got Glenn Wesley in a proper position. It's gonna allow Ray Bork to cover both Sabres, because the one Sabre is going in the direction of his teammate with the puck. Now, right there, we have ourselves a referee in the wrong position. You get three Sabres over here, three Bruins over here, and Ray Bork concentrating on the puck carrier. He kicks it ahead with his foot. That point is gonna come out here for Stevie Casper to go for it. Okay, what we have out here, Fred, is you got Glenn Wesley in a proper position. It's gonna allow Ray Bork to cover both Sabres, because the one Sabre is going in the direction of his teammate with the puck. Now, right there, we have ourselves a referee in the wrong position. You get three Sabres over here, three Bruins over here, and Ray Bork concentrating on the puck carrier. He kicks it ahead with his foot. That point is gonna come out here for Stevie Casper to go for it. Sabres are caught out of position. Now it's Johansson is the only one that's going to be able to do anything. The principle is 
leaves the goaltender, right, the shooter, right? What you've got to do is do not let Casper come across. Johansson goes in too close, forces the tie-in with Casper at the wrong time. Now Casper just got some little open room, dumped it through his legs. Now in the Kluzak goal, but the problem is there. You're going to have Kenny Lindsman stop it, gloves it ahead with his hand. Right here now, he's going to go. He, when he's going, you've got Krupp coming after him. Where Kluzak, I mean, where uh, Krupp makes the mistake is he goes for Lindsman's outside move. When Kenny gets down here, he's going to waver a little bit and go outside. Right there, he's going to head to go outside. That's going to let Kluzak walk in cold because Johansson never did catch up with Kluzak. Now the great pass by Lindsman, a one-timer top right up in the corner. It's all over. Great shift. Each team with six power plays to date, and the Sabres have two power play goals. That two out of six may sound pretty effective, but actually the Bruins have really contained them. In total, the Sabres have just nine shots in two periods of play, and on the power plays, six power plays they've mustered uh, maybe about five of the nine shots and they got a power play goal from Housley and one by Turgeon the Bruins with the two shorthanded goals forty seven seconds apart the shorthanded goal you talk about uh, the two shorthanded goals for perusing through the individual playoff records. You'll never guess what it just came across. Most shorthanded goals in one playoff year, three by one Bruin player. That was back in 1969. The number was 16. The old number 16 did it. Ah, uh, uh, Dave, you're, yeah, you're too kind. Oh, oh, oh no, 79. Derek. Rick Middleton. Rick Middleton. No. <laughs> Derek Sanderson had three back in the 1969 playoffs. You guys were gone in the first round that year against Montreal, weren't you? Yes, I you had that so. all in one series. Yeah, I got eight goals that series. Sniper. Yeah, I know. It was my best playoff year. Went wow. Down, downhill from there, but. <laughs> Both shorthanded goals by one player in a in a period. Bobby Lalonde had two against Minnesota in 1981. You got it, Newsy. Newsy Lalonde. I wonder what he's doing nowadays. Uh, I think he's out in, in, in uh, suburbs here in, in Boston selling cars. Jeez, Boston, I wish Boston I could remember. On the power play. We're ready to go in the third period. And uh, out there is uh, Lindsman with Sweeney and Janney. Harry O'Reilly trying that combination now. And it's Bork to center ice. The drive in. Ricochets around. Lindsman trying to get it. Janney over there trying to get it. Janney pokes it free. Janney goes behind the net. Wheels off in the corner and Lindsman is called for interference. He took down Mike Ramsey and now Buffalo gets their seventh power play and the Boston power play is up. Well that's all right Fred because the Bruins have been more effective short handed than they have been on the power play. Crowd cheering because Hartford has gone ahead of Montreal 3 2. In the third period. Montreal Boys. Canadians will have their hands full with Hartford. Hartford pretty strong, got a pretty good hockey club. You take them lightly, you're going to get hurt. Looking at that replay, I mean, the first glass, it looked like Ramsey fell over the back of Kenny Lindsman's legs. I think that's what Lindsman's trying to get away with, but to no avail. Boston shorthanded. Seventh power play for Buffalo, and they have two power play goals without too many shots on the power play. Mike Ramsey, a weird bounce in front, and Bork is able to get it and wheel it out. Sometimes that bounces for the other team and picked up and they get a glorious scoring chance. And this one is blocked by Kuzak as Housley try to wrap it in. But winding up now is Priestley. We've seen very little action. Playing the point on the power play. Drives it in. It takes a weird hop off the dasher and goes into the stands. That's doesn't a break I, for Boston. Doesn't that go that way when you don't get much ice time? You get put out in the power play late in the game. In the third period, you dump it and hit the, the dasher boards and pops into the stands on you. Boston leads 4-2 to two, just underway in the third period. One minute played and 122 left 
and the penalty against Ken Lensman. Seventh power play for the Sabres. Bumped into Larry Felder, the uh, sports editor of the Buffalo News. He oh, yeah. said to me, hey, if Buffalo can keep from going on the power play, they've got a chance. <laughs> I can see the uh, print in Buffalo tomorrow morning. They'll be taking ribs at the Buffalo power play for those short Here short comes over the line. In, a backhander and a save by Barrasso. He put that right on in a shorthanded bit. Now it's Andrzejczyk coming back. Sweeney and Marquardt are the penalty killers for Boston. Around the boards, it is kept in by Mike Ramsey. Wraps it around the other corner for Tucker. Tucker to Polino. Polino gets it back for Johansson. Now to Polino. Johansson again in the middle. The shot, the save. Rebound, save. And a, this one goes high. Oh, Boston got a lucky break there in the clear by Sweeney. A rebound shot by Andrzejczyk. A save. Mike Polino's got to be sick on that rebound. Put it over the net and a fall on Lemon. 38 seconds on the power play. Pierre Turgeon over the line. In the shot. Bounces in front. Weirdly. Loose. And just poked away by Burris. Now a drive. A save. Cut loose. A drive by Johansson. It misses. Buffalo doing everything but scoring. Bruins try to tie it up in the corner. Kelvin works it free. Can't clear it. Mike Ramsey's shot. The flex away to Johansson. Wrapped in. This is Buffalo's best power play. Andrzejczyk clears it in the corner to Rutu. Rutu gets it back from Johansson. The shot saved. Loose. And the Bruins get it. Kill off the penalty. Some great saves there by Lemlin. Mike Ramsey can't keep it in at the left point. And Buffalo did everything but score on that power play. With the score of Austin for Buffalo 2, Bruins hockey will continue in a moment. You know what it's like trying to get the car you want under $10,000? If you're getting nowhere fast, get down to your Chevy dealer of New England. You'll find 16 models under $10,000 and 8 models under $8,000. So why go in circles when you could be driving a Chevy? Now save an additional $1,700. Buy a Chevy today. Stop where more people end up. Chevy of New England. Marquardt doesn't get to the shot. It hits Lemelin in the shoulder. Nice save there. Rebound here. Save there with the stick. Goes to Polino. Tries to snap it up top. Goes over the crossbar. Buffalo has two power play goals, but that power play was better than either of the ones they scored on. Yeah. They had five shots on that power play, and that's about the amount that they had in the previous six. Long one up the center. Lindsman trying to break, but can't get it. At center ice, picked up by McCarthy with Lindsman. But the pass is outside the line. Taken over by Kluzak. Now to Bork, who has two assists and a goal. To Crowder. Crowder trying to move in. Checked on the play. Rupp works it free. Broken up. McCarthy at center ice. Right back for Crowder. Crowder kicks it ahead. Now intercepted by McCarthy. McCarthy coming in front. And it goes high as he walked in front with Crowder screening. Bork keeps it in around the boards. Janney just coming on. Pops it in deep. Crowder there. Along the boards for Kluzak. Kluzak going to the backboards. Kluzak in front. Score! McCarthy! Beautiful play by Kluzak to McCarthy to make it 5 to 2 Boston. What a goal scoring goal. Beautiful drop pass by Kluzak. He had Barrasso going with him. What a goal by Tom take. McCarthy. Great play by Kluzak. The soft pair of hands that takes. Well, let's see if Turn Tommy followed here. through on what he said was a success. Right here by Kuhn, right here, wait, snaps it up. A fallen Barrasso, another one up top. Well, let's look back to Reggie Lemlin and that penalty killing <laughs> that he did all by himself. There, you know that, that McCarthy that time didn't shoot it up under the crossbar. He shot it where Barrasso's shoulder was before Barrasso went down. Yeah, he did. Great, great timing to do that. Jay Miller pokes it in around the boards. Bruins trying to keep it in. Can't do it. And breaking is Smith with Gillies. A shot and a save by Lemlin. The long rebound in front. Knocked away. 
Jay Miller trying to clear it out. Kept in by Krupp. Krupp broken up. Breaking is Sweeney. Maybe alone. Sweeney. No chance. Watch Bobby cut across. Here comes Ricky. No, sir. Tommy Barrasso. There's another goal scorer's move. Love to see Bob Sweeney do this. Ted Sater having a word with Tom Barrasso is... What you worry about is your confidence. He's going to make a him. change. You talk to him, say, Tommy, what do you think? All right. Tommy says, you want to nice. make the move? Fine. But I'll tell you what. Tom Barrasso kept him in it, Derek. Oh, he did. The goals that he gave up, not his fault. He had no support. No Sabres support. Sabres are pressing. They're down yep. two goals. The two shorthanded goals blew this game plan right out the window. Stay with him and try to beat him in the third period. Beat him with a goaltender. You know oh. that man is going to be right back tomorrow oh, night. Tomorrow tomorrow night. night. Ever. And you know, I don't ever count Tom Barrasso out of it. Just as his defense is a little suspect. Right. Ricky fluttered a pass. Sweeney kicked it out, chased it down. Keep in mind that Ricky, Johansson, Krupp, none of them have ever played in the Stanley Cup playoffs before. Neither is Sweeney. Or Janney. Janney, right. Janney and Joey. I'm talking about defensemen, Derek. There's three oh, okay. defensemen I, I'm only, that have played. To pick on you, I'm not oh, that's on. all right. I'll give you a two-hander. <laughs> <laughs> Darren Pupa goes in goal, the former RPI netminder. Six to two, Boston. And Andrzejczyk finds Foligno offside. Ah. Crowd darn you blew the roof off this old building. Face off just outside the Boston line. Puck is back to Ray Bork. Bork figuring in three goals, sends it up to Sweeney. Sweeney with Miller and Byers off to Miller. Miller lets it go and misses short side. On rebound, Bork can't contain it. And back together, Gord Kluzak. He's also scored. He's checked the follow-up by Bork, though. He has it. Way to Miller. Miller to Sweeney. Another good break here. Sweeney over the line with Kluzak. For Kluzak, the shot over the net. Miller trying to get it free. And Tucker winding up for Buffalo. Six to two, Boston. Kelvin takes it away from Andrzejczyk. Bruins control it. Wesley, he scored a goal. He scored the first one. Gets it away to Joyce. Joyce to Janney. Janney. A follow-up by Telvin kept in. Now it's taken by Ruff. Ruff clears it away, looking for Napier. But Wesley has it. Now Rutu takes over at center ice. For Napier, fed in. Lemlin, not too busy. Over two periods, but brilliant at the start of the third on a power play for Buffalo, and they have five shots. Janney checking it behind the net. Now it's fed off into the corner. Kelvin jamming up. And a whistle for a faceoff. 14.33 left. Third period. Here's Tom Larson, NHL update. Fred, at one point in the third period, the Hartford Whalers had come back to grab a lead against Montreal at 3-2, but Chris Chelios on a power play ties it again for Canadiens right there. Blast just drills it by Mike Liut. That one stands 3-all now in the third. This update brought to you by Budweiser. Boy, that's a little surprising. Hartford going into Montreal with Richard Brodeur in goal and not Mike Liut. I was up there in oh. Hartford. I talked to Francis. Claude LaRose, the assistant coach, and said Brodeur put him in the playoffs. When they acquired him from Vancouver, he played four fantastic games, and they were looking for him to start. How about that? 
Casper against Turgeon. Turgeon has scored a power play goal for Buffalo. Housley also a power play goal. Winding up is Lyndon Byers now. Around for Burridge. Burridge checked by Krupp. Fought for. Jammed up. Shoe bottom there. Uh, Burridge. And finally, Buffalo gets it free. Shepard clears it behind the net. Ray Bork on it. Pokes it free. Leads the charge. Gets it off to Casper. He's over the line. Great shorthanded goal by Steve Casper. Puts it near the net. And Darren Cooper, P-U-P-P-A, ties it up. And we're in the third period. The score, Boston 6 and Buffalo 2. Terry O'Reilly behind the Boston bench. The Bruins lead 6-2. to two. Six minutes played in the third period. Boston 28 shots and Buffalo 15. Boy, and five threatening shots by Buffalo on that power play right at the start of the period. And Lundlund turned them aside. Lindsman out with uh, Crowder and McCarthy. Two big assists by Lindsman. The drive by Schubert and a save. Bruins Peterson trying to keep it in. And McCarthy does. McCarthy, a shot. Hit the post, maybe. Or just to the side of the net. Peterson keeps it in. Now Johansson gets it away to Smith. Smith on shoe bottom. Going deep. Stopping. Holding. Intercepted. Lindsman almost broke away. McCarthy just clears it out. Hartman winding up. And he gave it away to Peterson. Now Lindsman winding up. Intercepted by Hartman. Hartman clears it in the Boston end. Back for Wesley. Up the boards. Not out. Now it's out. The breaking Crowder. Picking up two Bruins with Joyce. Off for Joyce. Joyce is checked. Joyce for Talvin. In for Crowder. Can't get the shot away. And Doug Smith forced to ice it. As we near the seven-minute mark of the third period. Boston leading six to two. Good move on the part of Ted Sater. To put Darren Poop in here, the kid has never played in a playoff game. Give him a little taste of what it's all about. Maybe he comes up with a few big saves, gets his teammates excited for something to carry over tomorrow night. But this isn't what it's about, though. No, but what Not you want to do... <coughs> Not at 6-2, but if you're going to be a winning coach, you've got to take the, the negative and turn it positive. Right. Let's learn something out of this loss. We've got to get beat three more times if we're going to lose. The seven-game series. It isn't all over because of tonight. And Wiley Barrasso in to get his brains blown out. You don't need that. You need Cooper to get his feet wet. Sure. The Boston line has Janney out there with uh, Neely and Miller. And a heavy hit on Tucker by Neely, who still throws his weight around. And back with Wesley. Wesley loses. Puck centered. Bounces away. Miller for Neely. Two and one with Janney. And a Bruin player injured behind the play. Down on the ice. Wesley. Lindy Ruff met him like two trains coming in behind the net. What a hit by Ruff. Boy. Glenn Wesley is not moving, and that is scary. Jay Miller wants Mike Polino in a bad way. I'm not sure if that's just bad blood that's carried over through the night, but Glenn Wesley still motionless. Come on, Glenn, move. Yeah, the legs are moving. Good. Good sign. I think he got a little bit of a severe. There's Dr. Montier coming on the ice. One of the players pick him up so he doesn't slip. Well, they've got him over on his yeah, back yeah, now. He's smelling salts out. He might have been knocked out. He may have been, Derek, because he just went down. The sticks both went flying up in the, in the air. They just bent head on. I think Ruff saw Glenn coming, but I don't think Glenn saw Lindy, and the lights went out quickly. It was a clean hit by Ruff. Now this game could get ugly. Yeah. At 6-2, the game's not in question. Jay Miller is saying he's okay. I 
find out what kind of a shot it was. Well, I can't imagine what Phil Housley is going over with Don Koharski. Can you? No. Concern on the Bruin bench. Oh. Uh -huh. Getting back Better to Ted Sater, he, he took Barrasso out to save him further embarrassment. That was the move. Uh, oh, I, no, I agree, It would be Fred. embarrassing with six six if you put seven or eight by him. No, it's your number one goaltender. You don't want to get him rattled. You can't have Tommy Barrasso thinking twice about what he's doing. The Bruins beat him up top five times. But at the same time, if, if it's six two and you know the game is lost, not a bad idea to let a kid who's never played in the cup to get his feet wet, get some experience in case. You've oh, got to go to him later in the series. Oh, never hurt. I mean, won't hurt at all. A big factor in this series is Wesley's condition right now. I think he got his belt wrong, really. He has playing, played the whole season, been a standout rookie, and uh, here with a six to two lead, he gets belted. Was ever thus with the Bruins. Things are going well. Buffalo doesn't score, but they uh, knock a few guys out. That can turn a series around. He's glad He's, all right. He's a little groggy. A little groggy on the feet. Legs a little rubbery. We won't see him the rest no. of the night. No, but we're going to see some body checking. I think you're going to see some. <laughs> yeah. They're going to see some hits. Dan Bailey's really trying to find out what happened. So is Jay Miller. They better start cleaning the extra panes of plexiglass. Bodies will be flying now. Avoid at all costs major penalties. Glenn Wesley scored the first goal of the game. A beauty. Boy, he looked awful puffy around the bridge of the nose and the eye area, Fred. He may have gotten the right square on the nose. You think he got a broken nose out of it? But and then knocked boy, out? I'll tell you what, he looked like it coming off. It is six to two, 1242 left. Lindy Ruff will be passing the puck quick. <laughs> get yeah. it passed, get it up, get it out. He's a tough boy though, Lindy Ruff. He sure is. He's taken his lumps over the years and handed them out as well. Tough cookie, that guy. Boston with the lead. Wesley to the dressing room. Sweeney pounded by Ruff. Sweeney went right after Ruff and Sweeney went after him. And Ruff, and Ruff missed pounded him. him. What <laughs> Lindy Ruff wanted to do was immediately get in a fight and wear this down. Well, Bob had the right idea. The execution was a little amiss. Okay, well, Bob's not a fighter. <laughs> and what you do is you don't try to hit somebody. Start a fight in motion. You've got to be waiting planted. The guy in movement is the guy in trouble. It's not like fighting on the street. You've got balance involved. Bobby came in after him. Ruff had already gotten rid of the puck. Bob will try to put a little bit of a push cross check on him. See, he passes the puck at plenty of time. Now he avoids the check, but now he knows it's Bob Sweeney. Why not? I'll take five minutes to get out of, get out of this building tonight with my life. <laughs> but he's got seven minutes when he comes back. Not an enviable position to be in. Bob, <laughs> Bobby laughing. I wonder what Andy's saying, Joe. Way to give it to him. <laughs> Andy's going, Bobby, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> he said, why not? Bobby's going, why not? I may as well. And I've already got my goal tonight. Bobby says, how can I get five for fighting? I never hit him. <laughs> he said, I never hit him. He's right. He never right. did. <laughs> right Came to get that. five minutes tonight. You got to love Bob Sweeney for trying. Man. Bob Gillies now and Lyndon Byers again. get ugly could be a while before this one's over what are they serving for breakfast i tell you it's nice to see bob sweeney involved sweeney scored the prettiest goal of the night along with steve casper on that breakaway but an aggressive bob sweeney will add a lot to his talent he's got the natural skills 
I like that aggression in Sweeney. The earlier check, check on Krupp. Nailed somebody down the other corner. Bob Sweeney's a strong lad. But we gotta take him out and teach him fighting. Maybe he can work out with the Petrodellis during the offseason. Because you don't look for Bob Sweeney to fight. I mean, he's the, the puck handler, the playmaker, goal scorer. And now back to the studio, Tom Larson, NHL update. Thank you, Fred. The Detroit Red Wings are on the board in their game against the Toronto Maple Leafs, although they still trail 2-1 to one in the second period. Adam Oates, 6.52 for Detroit. Dave Barr with the assist. So it's a 2-1 lead for Toronto. This update brought to you by Budweiser. And the teams are at full strength. Sweeney and uh, Ruff got 2-2, two and two, a total of four minutes. Byers and Gillies got five minutes apiece. The teams are at full strength. Boston leads six to two. Tom Barrasso replaced by Darren Pupa in the third period after Sweeney's brilliant solo rush and the sixth goal. Backward Johansson icing called against Boston. Yeah, well, they Buffalo smart. They haven't gotten Cam stirred up since early in the hockey game. Oh, no, you don't want to stir up nearly. <laughs> He just fast, very fast, extremely strong. Quite a job Ted Sater has done with the Buffalo Sabres since taking them over midway through last season. Tremendous job. Excellent job. He also restored the confidence of Tom Barrasso, which made his job a little bit easier. Barrasso didn't know if he was going somewhere else or staying in Buffalo. Back to Ramsey, the shot deflected around. Bruins, Joyce can't clear it. Kluzak with it. Behind the net to Ray Bork. Looks like another of those games where you see Ray Bork out there all night long. He has two assists and a goal. Scored a beautiful goal to give Boston a two to one lead. Never had it from that point. Added two shorthanded goals. And breaking now, Napier over the line on Bork. Stops. Plays it into Arneal. Arneal checked. In the corner by Joyce. Puck batted around. Kept in. Napier a shot. Big save. Rebound. Save. And the Bruins Bork clears it. Great stop by Lundlin there. Napier moved in. Six to two Boston. Napier winding up again. He's coming on shoe bottom. Joyce trailing. Goes to the corner. Tries to put it in front. Block. And Telvin with it. Telvin. Away to Jenny. Jenny. To Neely over the line. Back for Telvin. The shot. Telvin from Neely and Jenny to make it seven for two, Boston. Darren Pupa. Not sharp, a little cold. A kind of a sharp shot by Telvin in the right spot. He started moving short side. I think the replay will show you he's moving short side. There's your goal scorer, makes the first play. Gets it up over to Jenny, over to Neely. Now Neely's got Telvin behind the play. See him move to the right side, never got back in place. Darren Pupa needs to see the puck. Yes. Good goalkeeper, just got to see the puck. Miller jamming with Polino a bit. They're separated. Polino checked by Schubottom. Back for it, Miller. Around the boards and out of the zone. Lindsman racing for it. Lindsman can't move it in. Back around the boards. Seven to two, Boston. Saw Peterson into the stands. Tucker trying to move in on Peterson. And everybody jamming. Frustration by the Buffalo Sabres. And what a night. For Boston Bruins defensemen, they've accounted for four of the seven goals. Well, Dave Miller is determined to get Mike Toledo. And you got shoe bottoms tying up. Ricky is trying to get a Lindsman. Shoe bottoms got him from behind. Krupp doesn't want to really get involved.
Well, it started out with Crowder and Peterson. <coughs> and they all ganged up. Jay Miller flicked a couple of little soft gloves on Toledo, and Ricky went after Miller. I'm not quite sure what Enderchuk thinks he's doing, backing in on Miller, because he's not going to do anything back to. Shoe Bottom's got Ricky Bull Barnes behind his back. Derek, four of the seven goals have been by defensemen, and all of them have been scored no farther out than 30 feet away. You got it. That's your offense coming up. The enthusiasm in playoffs, you're pumped up. You don't sit back, you go for open spots, because you're gonna know you're gonna work hard enough to get back. The last goal was Telvin from Neely and Jenny. And you're watching Bruins Hockey Live from Boston Garden on Nessa. For a limited time, Nissans come equipped with something extra. Cash. Buy a Sentra Standard and get $700 cash back from Nissan. Or buy a Stanza and get $1,000 cash back. Or a Hard Body Special and $500 cash back from Nissan. So come in now while we've still got cars and cash. Your New England Nissan dealers can. Yes, we can. Yes. And the right-hand side of your screen over there, Polino and Miller. Miller wants to start something right away. There we go. Polino's just going to shake him off. Jay says, I'm going to stay right with you. I think so. I'd like to get a report on Glenn Wesley and uh, maybe Mark Quinzel in the truck can. Yeah, we're in a new in broadcast position from where we normally are. Normally we'd have a phone that we could uh, call Nate Greenberg or down to the dressing room and find out. That's got to be a lousy feeling. And I bet you were in that position before. You're on the road, you're in an enemy building. Everybody oh, yeah. wants a piece of you, including oh, 14,000 that are on hand. I know. I've been in that spot a lot of times. And not just in a New couple York, minutes at a time. Philly, yeah. <laughs> and you look up and you say, well, there's 15 minutes left. I think I better get a third man in and get out of here. <laughs> Somebody starts a fight, I'm going to be third man in and get out of here. But in my day, they didn't have the third man in. You had to accumulate the five-minute majors. You had to get three of them to get thrown off. That takes time. Oh, yeah. A lot of punches. <laughs> Boston leads seven to two, six goals against Barrasso, one against Pupa, and four defensemen have scored for Boston. And here they go again. John Tucker giving it to Kenny Linsman. Linsman has Doug Smith now, and I know Kenny has a thing for Smith because last year, Doug Smith stick Linsman in the face. And Kenny hasn't forgotten that. He's trying to get Smith's shield off before they may get into anything. Boy, Tucker really got after Lisbon. Crowder jumped right on him. I can only guess that uh, Kenny may have followed through a little bit more than necessary off the faceoff. Well, Crowder wants Tucker, that's for certain. This is just game one. These guys potentially could play 6-4. I can't imagine how this could escalate any more than it has. They're going to have to start remodeling the penalty boxes. They have to knock out a few rows of seats to accommodate everybody. The game has featured two shorthanded goals in the span of 47 seconds in the second period by Boston. The goal scored by Casper and by Kluzak. All right, let's pick it up off the faceoff. Lindsay and Tucker on the draw. Here we go. Right now, there's nothing going on. Let's just there punch was. him in the head. <laughs> little cross check. Well, I ain't going to score five goals, so I think I'll throw a punch. <laughs> Crowder jumps into it. Fails Lindsay. Well, Lindsay still isn't off his feet. He started it. Uh, and he's not in the box either. No, I ain't. What do you know what I mean? <laughs> I think Tucker will get an extra two here. The Bruins will be on a power play. That should calm it down for a couple of minutes. Now, how many times have you seen 
all these kind of fights break out in game one. Everybody said, oh, it'll be a war tomorrow night. And oh. it looks like the ice capades the next night. Oh, nothing happens. Oh, yeah. no. Because the coaches get a hold of you and say, win the hockey game first, you calm down. Time to say hello to Al Hanley. Braintree, 66th birthday from Chris. All right, Al. 66 in a Bruins fan. See, we're trying to get into the public relations aspect of the game. Being a good sport. Yeah, how are you? It's good sport time here at Boston Garden. <laughs> this settles <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of issues, Dave, where you have little gripes and beefs going on. And what happens a game like this, everything calms down because everybody got even. If it was one-sided, then you're going to have some resentment build. But at this point, the Bruins win the game. They're winning the fight, basically. And they, and they certainly out hit Buffalo, so. Buffalo at this point getting beat. Hey, Chris! Trying to stay calm, you know, get into a little bit of trouble. We'll get some nutcake here yelling. <laughs> hey, Chris, I don't think there are Chris on either team. Yeah. Well, Kenny did get the penalty. They did call the high stick on Lisbon. Except they can't put him in. There's no room to put him in There's there. There's no room in the box. Well, it all added up. Tucker, I believe, got two separate minors. Crowder got a roughing, and uh, Lisbon got a high sticking, and Tucker must have gotten a, a rough and, or maybe a double rough. Maybe even a Lindy rough. Now, what do you do if you're the, the referee? Do you call those crowd a third man in? If you call Linsman a fight or an altercation, third man yeah. in, you can throw him out, throw Tucker out. Then you could get Polino out. And all these guys could have been gone. During a regular season game, they'd be gone. But you're going to get a game misconduct in a game like this and say you had a couple during the season, carries over. You're looking at suspension time. Lyndon's trying to solve the problem. Lyndon Byers telling Doc Gorski, look, why don't I sit where Andy Moog sits and we can let Kenny get in the box? Well, that's it. The Bruins are going to have one more penalty. That's all she wrote. There are going to be fewer guys on the bench than there are in the box. Gorski says, look, you guys are the bad boys. You'll just have to be uncomfortable. Sabres got a lot of room on their bench. These guys are... Breaking up into little clicks, two and three here, a <laughs> couple here. What is Priestley's over there? I haven't played all night. I'm not getting involved. Boston leads seven to two. They have 30 shots, 17 for Buffalo, and the Bruins have outplayed them in every department, really. And Wesley groggy precautionary is a drive by Peterson over the head of Poopa taken to the hospital for for x-rays not precautionary x-ray just x-rays yeah they probably <laughs> x -rays and x -rays. they probably are worried about a concussion I'm certain precautionary x-ray no 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 an x-ray is an x-ray but x-rays he, he was, was un unconscious he was unconscious on yeah we could tell that I mean he was didn't budge but gee that's good news Janney with uh, Joyce and Neely face off to the right of Poopa, 1040 left. Burns would just like to get it over with and get ready for game number two. What a breakout here by Turgeon, and it's a three on two for the moment. And he gets it away to Shepard. Shepard in and missed the net, forced wide by Lemlin. Bruins trying to come out with it. Janney can't get it. Kept in by Buffalo. Shot by Hartman, saved by Lemlin, and he covers up. Now well, Shepard and Peterson. Peterson. Here we go. Who's buying breakfast? I don't know. We may still be here for it. We'll be here a while. Now Tom Larson, NHL update. Red Philadelphia had led two to nothing, and then it was tied two two with the cap. Goal here by Dave Poulan at 9:21 to the third period for the Flyers. It's tied, or it's now three two Philly. This update brought to you by Budweiser. Well, well, we broke away. Bruce Shoebottom. Shoebottom got into it. Mike Hartman wanted Neely, and Shoebottom said, "No, you're not going to get him." 
Fans here loving shoe bottom. Where are the linesmen? Well, they're, no, they're not going to break it up. It's resting. The linesmen are busy with Shepard and Peterson. Shoe bottom is not quitting. Now here come the linesmen, like the Keystone Cops, sir. I don't know if I'd want to run into shoe in an alley on a dark night. No. The guys really like them, too. He's a real likable guy, shoe bottom. Brings a lot of enthusiasm to the room, a lot of spirit. I know Mike Milbury liked him down at Maine. Well, apparently that's going to be it for the night for Shoe. It probably does trigger that. We can't put anybody else in the box. Let's give them fighting and a misconduct. Yeah. Where's Hartman? Is he in the box? Shoe bottom was. No, he attacked. Yeah, he attacked. <laughs> There's shoe. There's the shoe. <laughs> now, what is that guy going to do? That always amazes me. A guy throws a shoe <laughs> on the ice. Now he's going home with one sneaker. Somebody out there is going to walk in the call. Uh, what the he guy did was. Blew my mind in Montreal. Threw a pair of pants on the ice. Everybody looking around for the guy nude. <laughs> Somebody took his buddy's shoe and threw it on the ice. Yeah. <laughs> well, Andy Moog there on the Boston bench and trainer Larry Ness and the penalties being announced. Wesley scored first for Boston on a power play in the first period. Housley's power play tied it up. Well, the Bruins had an edge. It was 1-1. Then a great goal by Ray Bork set up by McCarthy and Crowder. Great pass by Crowder made it 2-1 Boston. Then the Bruins with two shorthanded goals in a span of 47 seconds. Casper from Bork and Kluzak from Lindsman, and it was four to one. Turgeon's power play from Johansson made it four to two. Boston coming back with goals by McCarthy, set up by Kluzak, and Sweeney on a solo, and out went Barrasso, in came Poopa, and Telvin has scored, set up by Neely and by Janney. Since then, it has... Uh, Rarely tumbled down as a hockey game, and uh, it was a great game for the Bruins. Blew it open, then it got chippy, then it got downright belligerent. Oh yeah. well, boys will be boys. Any good movies on? Huh? I don't know. And well, we can't change these monitors. <laughs> That's a penalty box, not a player's bench. <laughs> Can you believe that? Family portrait. They're sitting on each other's <laughs> lap. Grown men sitting on each other's lap. Calm down, guys. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen the box with that many guys in it. No, I haven't. Okay, the, the smaller Standing guys. Standing room only in the Buffalo area. The smaller guys sit on the bigger guys' laps. I think the Sabres got the idea. Everybody stand up. Yeah. <laughs> Let's sit on each other's lap. Heck, we can fit a few more in here by standing up. Sitting yeah. down, we can. Ray Bork with it. Away to Joyce. Joyce is checked by Napier. Housley winding up now with Mike Ramsey. Housley in the center ice. Off for Napier. Napier for Housley. The shot. A kick out save by Lemlin. A beauty. And the puck to Neely. Neely trying to come out. Ahead for Janney. They break. Offside. Janney just made the move at the line. He had a three on two with Kluzak and Neely. Just didn't get it into the zone in time. Pulled up right at the line instead of getting into the zone and then pulling up to make his play. Tom Barras is probably glad that he's getting a chance to sit down and, and watch this. Actually, he's probably getting sick watching it, but better to be where he is than where Darren Poop is. Oh, and that's true. And the faceoff outside the Buffalo line. Casper is on with Burridge and McCarthy. As uh, Terry O'Reilly has to improvise. Three, two. There are five players on the bench and six on the ice. <laughs> and one of the five is Mo. <laughs> that's uh, that's being shorthanded. Well, the teams are at full strength. Puck to Napier. He's checked. 
Now it rolls back to Ray Bork. One of those nights for Ray where he's been playing all night long. Wheels it away, center ice, gives it to Casper, off to Burridge. Burridge over the line, trying to cut in on Krupp. Couldn't collect it in the corner, fights for it. Ridden off by Riki. It goes to McCarthy, put it on net. Knocked away by Pupa. McCarthy with an assist and a goal tonight. Tom McCarthy, most of the season injured, then playing with the main Mariners. A talented scorer. Bork hits Telvin with a pass. Over the line for Janney. Janney broken up by Priestley. On the puck, Neely for Joyce. Joyce is hit by Smith and knocked down. 8.53 left, third period, 7-2 Boston. Telvin lost it. Smith is over the line. The shot, the save, the rebound, the save. Two in a row. That one on Priestley. Smith and Priestley right in alone on Lemlin. Reggie wasn't too sure about Priestley's. <laughs> he kept peeking over his shoulder, and Priestley kept looking around him, saying, it's got to be in the net. Looked like it got caught in the pad after Reggie went down on the first one, Derek. Priestley almost uh, shot it right into his pad. Right there, big save. Now he's waiting. He's down a little early on Priestley's shot. And into his sweater. Not a soul in this building is left. Seven to two, 844 left, and everybody's here. Uh, it's a game for the Garden faithful. Mike Ramsey and Gord Kluzak. Both seem willing. Standing room only. And now he's gonna throw them out because they're willing. Gonna end this. Got a little more room in the penalty box for you guys. <laughs> yeah, a couple just came back out. Throwing him out. Yeah, he may be. He's got the gate. Gate open for Ramsey. That's going to be it for the night for both. If I were Buffalo and Ted Sater, I'd want to get this over with quickly. I'd say to the players, you know, let's let's cool it now. We're, we got the Hey, well, let's get it over Bruins. with. 8.44 left. You're not going to intimidate the Bruins. you got absolutely nothing to prove. Wrap it up. Come back at them again tomorrow. And hope Instead, for the best. you drag it out. The fans stay here. People get annoyed looking at the Buffalo bench. Whatever Sater's game plan was, it was utterly destroyed by Boston. The Bruins dominated every department. Well, they want to shut off Ray Bork. Got the goal and two assists. That's, that's shaky. Napier clears it in. Around the board, Fork is still out there. Burridge tips it away. Casper, Crowder, Burridge with Telvin and Bork. 7-2 to two Boston. Over the line, Arneal can't get it. Telvin around for Bork, around for Burridge, and they work it out to Casper, and he's broken up. Bork intercepts again. Can't send Crowder in. Back comes Napier. Napier with U2. Check. Bruins with it. Crowder breaks with Burridge, two on two. Crowder holding. Can't set up Burridge. It rolls in on Pupa. Rutu starts it away. Rutu broken up. Neely over the line. Neely can't put it on net. Behind the net, Neely battling with Polino. And the Sabres clear it. <coughs> Jay Miller. Checked by Andrew Chuck. Gets it away to Bork. Bork for Linsman. Linsman cuts it out to center ice. He got two big assists early for Boston. For Neely. For McCarthy. McCarthy feeds it in. Ricky and Linsman were tied up there. And Buffalo breaks. Felino and Turgeon. Turgeon has a goal. Off for Felino. Feeds in deep. Around the boards. Jay Miller playing defense? Yes, he is. Jay Miller on defense. <laughs> he played a few games last year at defense. Played well, too. Yep. He's out there with Bork. Housley over the line. Rolls it in. And Jay Miller, the defenseman. Ronald scored a great goal earlier in the game. 
Bruins clear it away, and this will be icy. Krupp prep back for it. 6.43 left. Well, Terry O'Reilly doesn't really have any choice with Wesley at the hospital. He flew Zach out of the game, and Shubottom and Peterson if we're in the box. He needed somebody. Nesson's coverage of the Stanley Cup playoffs continues tomorrow night at 7.30. It'll be game two of this best of seven series. The Bruins and Sabres live from Boston Garden. So be sure to check out Bruins Digest with your host Tom Larson at 7. And then game two, the Bruins and Sabres only on Nesson. Some marvelous goaltending by Reggie Lemlin at the start of the third period. The score was Boston 4, Buffalo 2. And Buffalo hadn't done much on power plays by getting shots on, even though they had two power plays. Put five shots labeled and some more that missed. And Lemlin turned them all aside, want, and then the Bruins came back. You want to look at a couple of turning points. 2-1. Bruins get, like Housley said, between periods. Get a penalty. Sabres on the power play. Kluzak and Casper put that away with two shorthanded. This is a whole different game. Tomorrow night will be a whole different ballpark. You have to come out and do it all over right. again. Face off now in the Boston zone. 6.43 left. Boston leads 7-2. to two. Game number one. Janney gets the draw to Peterson. Around for Sweeney at right wing. Sweeney is checked. Cuts away. Slashed by Gillies. Out goes Gillies. Clark, I guess, just didn't want to skate tonight. Every time he's on the ice, he finds a way to get to the box. Buffalo penalty to number 90, Clark Gillies. Didn't he Give have a potential pro I'm career as a baseball player? It looked like he was waiting on Buffalo's a breaking Clark pitch Gillies that time. Two Clark Gillies, two-hander right up around the shoulders. 13, Stupid penalty. Yeah. Like I said, I don't think Clark wanted to finish this one out. He just soon said, I don't want to tell the coach you don't want to go out. <laughs> oh, she going to get a penalty. Go get a penalty, sit down. Jay Miller out on the power play. Boy, he's Mr. All-Purpose tonight for Terry O'Reilly. Janney has Sweeney on the right, Miller on the left. That's an all-New England line. Work for Telvin. Off for Janney. Janney drives it in. Around the boards. Knocked out by Rutu. Covered by Telvin. Picked up by Arneal. Breaking on Bork, and Bork just pokes it away from him. Power play Boston. Telvin, center ice. Broken up. And the puck is cleared away. Six minutes left. Seven to two Boston. Janney winding up. Gets the open. Off for Miller. Miller, tough end. Far side. Fans rooting for Jay on that one. Kept in by Bork. Off for Janney. Miller. Called for roughing. Miller belts rough. Down. And you rough. I knew that was coming. It's exactly what O'Reilly had in mind. That Miller and Ruff are going to be alone in front of the net. Jay gave two or three cracks. Then you rough. It isn't Bob Sweeney he would have been fighting. It's Jay Miller. Now Jay's just looking for it now. Lindy Ruff trying to act like a captain. <laughs> well, they were going at it. I'm going to help my club and not go off the ice. 7-2, Lindy. You can turn around and fight him if you want. <laughs> Watch them. They're really tackled up with him. Watch Jay. Jay just drifts from the shot. He's going to go bang in the back of the head. Biff. Now he's down on the ice. Gets the cross check from Krupp. He gives him another one. Face off outside the Buffalo line. And each team short a man, 539 left. Boston 31 shots, Buffalo 21, but shots don't really count now. The Bruins really put it away with the seventh goal on Darren Poopa. On in relief of Tom Barrasso. About nine shots through two periods. Try Buffalo. him now. Bob Sweeney's going to try me now. Face up. Uh. 
Sweeney and Ruff may go at it. And Prohaski is uh, talking to the Sabre bench. Ray Bork over to talk with Terry O'Reilly. And Ray says something to uh, Sweeney like, cool it. Cool it, Bob. Don't worry about it. And Neely has replaced Sweeney. Steal by Jenny. And Neely goes after Ruff. And down he goes. And now Ruff is back up and he wants to fight. Well, that didn't last long at all. <laughs> Ray Borks laughing at Ruff. Indy Ruff turtled on Neely. He didn't turtle it on Sweeney. Wouldn't he do well to pick up a misconduct or something to get into the shower? Well, the lousy thing, if you're if you're a saver, Derek, is you're going to sleep in this town tonight. You're going to come back to this building tomorrow night. There's a friend of mine, son in the penalty box, wanted me to talk to Billy. His son's in the box. He says, you mentioned my name. He says. <laughs> Oh, he's had a lot of company tonight. Yeah, Tommy. I'm surprised Cam picks up an extra two there. Ruff was a willing participant at the outset of that. He took a little swipe with the stick at Cam. Sure he That's did. when they got into it. Cam wouldn't go out there and intentionally attack anybody. Hit you. Oh, he, hit you, yeah. He'll well, hit I you. Mean, he, he came out. He ain't going to go out and jump you. He'll hit you, and then if you want to square off, fine. What well, Ray Bohr came over and said to Bob Sweeney before the faceoff, after the puck drops, get to the bench. Which he did immediately, and Neely came on with one mission find rough Terry O'Reilly <laughs> not too subtle in that yeah <laughs> real sly Boston leads seven to two and it's a power play for Buffalo a four on three and omnipresent Ray Bork gets control goes behind the net moves it up to Casper and out, out of the zone Boy, I'd like to see Janney Fred with all that open ice Casper the penalty killer here's Housley who loves this situation drops it in and Bork is there can't clear it. Casper gets it to him now. Fails to clear it. Now he clears it. Owsley had to go outside for it. And his pass back to Shepard is outside. In 25 seconds, the Bruins are going to be two men short. For a good minute and 18, it's going to be 25, for a good 45 seconds anyway. I mean, not that it really means a whole lot at this juncture of the game. No, but it's nice, to, it's nice to burn him with a goal. You know that. Yeah. You want to, you want to fight, and you're going to end up in the box. And we'll get a goal on you. But you never play like this unless the game's out of hand. Right. Never. Seven to two, Boston. We're under five minutes left. Third period. Lindsman is out with uh, Peterson and Telvin. Winding up is Housley. Housley and Turgeon power plays. They've scored the Buffalo goals. And Tucker starts it back in the center ice. Lindsman chops him down and is going out. Well, Lindsman really gave him a two-hander. Well, remember earlier, Tucker off a of faceoff taking on Lindsman. Yeah. Kenny didn't look like he really did much but trip him up. I'm surprised Tucker is down and went down that hard there. Looked like he tripped him up. I could see a slash or a trip, but Tucker went down as if he had a broken ankle. He went down like he got Polak. Tucker does have a bad foot. Well, he may have broken it. Now, he caught him on the ankle. It was a low shot. 
He swoops it around here. Oh. Got him right on the ankle. Ball. Wow, great camera shot. Great camera work there. Wow. Well, right now we have the two-man advantage for Buffalo, and uh, that's a that penalty of Linsman's won't start for a minute 19. No. 4:44 left, third period, seven to two, Boston. Well, Ted Sater can't be too pleased with that. He considers Tucker one of his most valuable players. Bork is able to clear it, winding up his Housley, a two-man at a four-on-three right now. Housley goes deep, broken up by Bork behind the net. Peterson trying to get it, and Bork kicked away to Casper, jammed up by Bork, flipped around the other side. Peterson and Andrichuk. Andrichuk, uh, Peterson gets it away in front, rolls in on Lemlin for a save. It is a two-man advantage for Buffalo. Four minutes left. Housley back for Priestley. Shot, a save, beauty. And here comes Casper, almost broke away. Priestley just got it. Casper already has a shorthanded goal. And Kluzak won. Cross for Andrichuk in front. The score by Turgeon on a five on three, and that makes it seven to three. Uh, it's Pierre's second of the night, and the Bruins are going to stay in a five on three situation because uh, Kenny Lisbon's penalty will not start until Miller's out of the box. Well, Jay's out of the box now. <coughs> With 20 seconds, Neely will come out. The Bruins are going to spend pretty much the rest of this game short-handed. Terry O'Reilly sends out Sweeney with uh, Miller and Telvin. It's a five on three. Miller's on a defense. Off for Doug Smith. Smith over the line. The shot and the save by Lemlin. But kept in by Polino. Around the boards, it's still a two-man advantage. Housley missed the net. Priestley keeps it in. Housley moving it in. A drive and a save by Lemlin. A beauty. Burrage clears it away. It is seven to three. Boston. Three fifteen left. Yeah, Turgeon gets his second. Andrechuk and Housley to get the assist. Right across in front, knocked away into the corner. Polino, check, Bork with it, able to clear it. One ten left on the Lindsman penalty now. And under three minutes left in the game. Seven to three, Boston. Turgeon, away to Rutu. Rutu over the line, drops it. Turgeon a shot, blocked. Joyce is able to clear it. Fifty-three seconds left on the Lindsman penalty. Seven to three, Boston. Johansson could be icy. Yeah, wave it off. Miller can't clear it. Back to Johansson. Now to Andrichuk. To Johansson. Shot. Deflected wide. Andrichuk in the corner. Puts it in front and out comes Joyce. Short-handed. And a Buffalo player hurt. I might have blocked that shot. Right ahead of Rutu. He's uh, limping back to the Buffalo bench. Well, him and Miller had a little go behind the net. Rutu's shaken up. Tonight's game is being brought to you in part by Nissan Cars and Trucks, built for the most important race of all, the human race. By Budweiser, proud sponsor of the 1988 U.S. Olympic team. This Bud's for you. And by Sullivan Tire Family Car Care Centers. Because family spirit is what Sullivan is all about. Too bad the third period had to... End up like this, yeah. End up. Protracted fights, brawls. Chippy play. When the Bruins played so superbly. 
dominating every department of the game. Offside by a country mile. Polino. Look at our Budweiser NHL scoreboard. A final Montreal four and Hartford three. Another final Philadelphia four, Washington two. In the third period, the Islanders two, New Jersey one. In the third period, Toronto two and Detroit one. And in the third period, St. Louis two and Chicago nothing. It's Calgary four, Los Angeles nothing in the second period. Winnipeg one and Edmonton one in the second period. A look at the Budweiser scoreboard. And here it is Boston seven and Buffalo three. Two shorthanded goals breaking the game open for Boston in the second period by Steve Casper and by Gord Kluzak. They came 47 seconds apart. Bruins clear it around and out. They are shorthanded and that penalty almost up to Linsman. Under two minutes, 145 left. Linsman is out. The teams are at full strength. Shepard broken up by Telvin. Back comes Burridge over the line. Off for Casper. Casper clears it in. Glenn Wesley was hurt. Taken to the hospital for x-rays. That's what started it all. It's, it's, uh, the uh, overzealous check of a 6-2 game, Fred. And then it turned ugly after that. That was Lindy Ruff hitting Wesley. But the reports are that appears to be okay. Here's McCarthy with a goal, a drive, and a save by Pupa. 108 left. Third period. Around the boards, Peterson battling to keep it in. It's knocked away. Center ice covered by Smith. Smith to Gillies, and the play is offside. And a heavy collision, Smith and McCarthy. And Tom McCarthy, a beautiful goal set up by Gord Kluzak. And then the breakaway by Sweeney, another picture goal. The fifth goal. Was it McCarthy got the fifth one? That's right. Backbreaker, that one. They fought back to four to two. They were still in the game. Well, that came right after Lemlin's great work in the Nets. Yeah. And that was the killer right there. The shots are listed 32 for Boston, 23 for Buffalo. We have 59 seconds left. Ricky drives it in, a save by Lemlin. Drops it off for Jay Miller, who's playing defense. Up for Jenny to clear out, to drive back in. Going for it, Peterson. Peterson, up the middle. Now can't get clear, gets it away to the open man. And it's Joyce to clear in. Joyce with Jenny and Sweeney. Indeed. Puck loose, Janney with it. Around the boards, batted out by the Sabres and covered by Ray Bork. 20 seconds left. Seven to three, Boston. An impressive opening victory in game number one. Bork taking his time. Five seconds left. And that's it. Bruins salute Reggie Lamlin. None better than the start of the third period. Boston shorthanded. He turned aside. Five shots by Buffalo. In Buffalo's really only impressive power play, even though they had three power play goals. Yeah, that's true. But they did. The theory is you got to set up the one goal, the one shot for the goal. Sabres did that successfully, so you can't really slight their power play. They got three. I mean, it would be asinine to say that it wasn't impressive, but their puck handling there early in the third period and their ability to move it then, it was really authoritative. That gave them a better look on the power play. Well, now, of course, concern, will Glenn Wesley be able to play? The Bruins need that depth on uh, defense, and Glenn Wesley has been a mainstay all season long. We're looking at Tom McCarthy, a goal and an assist. Andy Moe, as the Bruins post a seven to three victory. The final score, Boston seven, Buffalo three. We'll have our wrap up in a moment. Okay, let's 
us it up. Oakley Hills filling in for Bob tonight. You can buy and let you hold the picture in your hand while the feeling is still in your heart. Well, it started out a pretty good hockey game. The Bruins got that 7-2 lead in the third period, and it just got kind of boring when both sides went looking for someone to settle a score with over and over and over ad infinitum. It got to be pretty dull stuff. Tell you the truth, if you're still watching, it's hard to understand why. <laughs> but since you're still there, hey, hang around. Dave Shea now and his guest, Gordon Kluzak. All right, Tom, thank you. Uh, you. If you're one of the lucky ones, you get to shower early and get comfortable for this interview. <laughs> I guess I did. I don't, uh, it wasn't the smartest thing I ever did. When you only have a three-man rotation, it's tough to go right <laughs> down to two, but, you know, the versatile Jay Miller can drop back in there and do the job. Yeah, I bet Jay's been bugging Terry to play a little defense for some time. He played it last season and seemed to enjoy it. I think he looks good. I, every time he gets a chance to play there, he looks like a natural. Well, before it all hit the fan in the uh, third period, the game was pretty well in hand. You guys dominated in every phase of uh, the hockey game. You've got to be pleased with the way it went tonight. Yeah, uh, you know, we played a good, strong hockey game. Uh, you know, we really had the shots on goal, and, the, and, and we, our penalty killing is strong. You know, we got two shorthanded goals, and our power play produced, a, you know, one goal for sure for us. And, uh, you know, that's real important for us, and the special team department in, in the, in the uh, playoffs is so crucial. Well, there's no question there was a, a series uh, of plays that led to the turning point. Uh, uh, Reggie did a good job killing off a penalty when it was still a, a close hockey game. Uh, but the shorthanded goals, back-to-back, -back, Stevie and yourself, uh, tremendous, tremendous uh, penalty killing. I think, uh, yeah, we really did a job out there tonight. We got a couple of uh, shorthanded goals, and it gives, always gives you a boost. And when you get two of them back-to-back -back like that, it really gave us a boost. And I think another real important part of it was the start of the third there. Reggie... Uh, stood on his head and kept, exactly. kept the score 4-2, and then we ended up going down the ice and making a 5-2, and that was pretty much the game from that point. Uh, so, you know, there Reggie comes up with a big save when you need it, and that's what you got to have in the playoffs. All right, let's take a look at your shorthanded goal. It was 3-1, uh, still killing off the same penalty, and, and you came up big. Yeah, I'm, I, I remember Kenny always talking about me continuing to skate hard to the net. When I saw Kenny, uh, Kenny had the puck, and he looked at me. I, I knew that I had to keep skating. You know, sometimes you might just pull up. And I knew Kenny looked at me right there, and I, and I just decided to keep going because I knew he'd make the pass. And uh, he made it right on my stick, and uh, I put it up in the net. Well, it looked like Johansson uh, was in decent enough position, Gordy, to keep that pass from getting to you. I thought he had inside position on me. That's why initially I wasn't, I hadn't really decided if, I, if there was an opportunity to go. But then uh, I just took a couple more strides, and... Kenny delayed a little bit there and made a great pass. And I think Johan just touched Johansson's stick, and I was fortunate enough to get it up and over to Russell's glove. Of course, uh, did you try to go upper far side knowing that Tommy was going to be sliding over to meet you, or was it just a matter of getting your stick on and hoping it was on there? Well, certainly I tried to go. No, I just, <laughs> I just, you just, <laughs> you I gave you a chance. Stick. You're just uh, skating as hard as you can. You're getting the stick, uh, getting, trying to get the stick on the puck, and it goes up over his shoulder. And Put your hands in the air. All right, now, what do you do for an encore as a team tomorrow night? How do you come back after all the rough housing and all the bad blood and, uh, and all the fighting and all of that, Gordy? How do you approach tomorrow night? We come back with the same attitude we had tonight. Uh, we have sure we won one game. We've got a long ways to go. We can't get too high about it. We have to be confident. We have to know what we did, uh, the intensity, the discipline that we showed out there. Uh, we gained some confidence tonight, but we got to know that they're going to be coming back hard. They're an excellent hockey team, and, and we just have to go back and play our same game. And uh, forget about this one; it's gone now. And uh, we got game two tomorrow night. Well, nice to see a playoff victory run up. It's been a while, especially with Montreal being the thorn in the side. Uh, good luck tomorrow night. Thanks, Thanks. Gordy Kluzak, our guest. Let's go back to Tom Larson. And guests on the replay receive the Polaroid Spectra system. Final score in the series opener: the best of seven. The Bruins. 7-3 over the Buffalo Sabres, so the Bees lead this series 1-0. I will be back, and we'll check some of the action highlights on this one when tonight's Bruins Polaroid Instant Replay continues. You're watching Boston Bruins Playoff Hockey on your New England Sports Network. and again in 83, winning a five-game series in four and a seven in a seven. Well, this one's a best of seven, too, of course, but the uh, Bruins now have never lost a series in the postseason against a Sabres team, and they have now started with a win in this one. The final again tonight, seven to three, the Bruins. We are ready with a look at some of the action highlights, so here you go. Buffalo goaltender tonight, Tom Barrasso, capable of winning one by himself, 
And Reggie Lemelin for the Bees, having twice blanked the Sabres. Observe Mr. Barrasso covering a loose puck just a hair before the arrival on the scene of the Bruins' Craig Janney. This is action from an early Boston power play. This is more action from that same Boston man advantage. Holding. Now, still holding. Across. Glenn Wesley, the rookie defenseman, the Boston goal, a brief one to nothing lead. Buffalo ties it, though, with Lyndon Byers away. Shepard is out there, too. Turgeon, some good moves. Wheels it around for Rutu. Back to Housley. The shot scores. Housley, a power play goal. Into the corner to tie it at one. Which is where it was at the end of the first period, a 1 1 tie. In the second period, the Bruins yeah, start to open it up. Prouder, one on one with Ramsey. Drops it for Bork. Bork in. B's up one, outgunning Buffalo by about a 3-1 margin for shots. Remarkable save by Barrasso here. Totally screened by Tommy McCarthy, still manages to glove it. Now, Buffalo power play. The Bruins score twice, shorthanded. Broken up. Casper breaking. Left wing side, may break in. Casper shorthanded. Steve Casper shorthanded. Makes it Boston three and Buffalo one. Johansson kept it in. Broken up. Buffalo rookie Pierre Turgeon notches one for the Sabres to bring it back to a two-goal lead for the Bruins. Nice wrist shot. It's 4-2 Boston. But the Bruins hit for two more quickly, and this one is done. For Kluzak, Kluzak going to the backboards. Kluzak in front. Scare McCarthy! Beautiful play by Kluzak to McCarthy to make it 5-2 Boston. Kept in by Krupp. Krupp broken up. Breaking to Sweeney. Maybe alone. Sweeney. That brought about a Buffalo goalie change. Darren Pupa for Barrasso. More to save Barrasso for another night than them. blame him for the count, which goes to 7-2. to two. Telvin now. Jenny, Jenny, the Neely over the line. Back for Telvin. The shot. Telvin from Neely and Jenny to make it 7-2 to two, Boston. Though the outcome pretty well established at this point. Five goal lead for the Bruins, which leads to frustration which leads to fights, which leads to penalty boxes filled to beyond their intended capacity. The game deteriorated to something that uh, really shouldn't be called hockey at about that point. It was really silliness. Somewhere in there, Pierre Turgeon scored a goal for Buffalo, but it just got totally ridiculous after the Bruins got that five-goal lead, and the final was 7-3. to three. Game two of this series, same place. Nesson tomorrow night with a digest at 7, face-off at 7.35. And uh, Sox baseball with those Tigers here tomorrow afternoon, too. Fred Cusick and Derek Sanderson up next when the replay continues on Nesson. <laughs> Buffalo in nine games, including the regular season, 38 to 21 for the season. Glenn Wesley lost consciousness on the ice for a while. Looks like he's going to be okay. Let's go back to Boston Garden now to Fred Cusick and Derek Sanderson. Gentlemen. Thank you, Tom. An impressive victory for the Boston Bruins in uh, game number one, seven to three. The Bruins outplayed them in every department, Derek. Well, they, they, came, out, they came out hitting. That was the important thing. The Sabres tried to stay with them for a while, but the, the real knockout checks, the Bruins delivered. And that hurts a player, uh, a team's ego as, as a whole, as a group. They try to retaliate. They struggle a little bit. It's 2-1, power play situation, and bang, we get two shorthanded goals. Now, that really bothers the ego, and now they got to dig themselves, they've dug themselves a hole to get out of, and then, geez, they fight, they get back one. And then, at the start of the third period, Lemon was just tremendous in, in the nets, and uh, when he was counted on, he came up big, and, that, and that's what the Bruins needed. They have a lot more confidence today than they did yesterday. Well, the Bruins really kill the penalties very effectively, allowing very few shots, although when you look at the summary, three goals by Buffalo, they were all power play goals. But I think that's very, very deceiving. It was good penalty killing by Boston, 
except at the start of the third period, that one stretch, two minutes, and Lemlin came through with five saves. And that's all you can ask of a goaltender. When See, Reggie's the type of goaltender, I think he likes to see the puck. I think he likes to have a few shots early, be in the game, moving well. And then they had just three cold turkey shots on him, and he, he, he rose big to the occasion then. Uh, I know they had uh, only had five or six shots, and they had two goals, so you'd say to yourself, well, maybe Lemelin's not playing that well. But the quality chances were equal on both sides of the fence, and Lemelin came out big. Tommy Barrasso played extremely well but in places, but they got his number late, and, and it just it was too many times guys were coming in on top of him all alone, and he had to make, and make guesses, and, and he just wasn't successful. And the final score in game one, Boston 7 and Buffalo 3. Here's Trump. All right, Fred, thank you. I'll be back. We'll get a look at some of the action from uh, a lot of the others underway in the playoffs tonight, too, and the scores of all of the rest. When Bruins hockey continues, the Stanley Cup playoffs on your New England Sports Network. Final game one tonight, the Bruins 7, the Buffalo Sabres 3. Adams Division semifinal round. These Bruins and those Sabres. I'll be here with Bruins Digest at 7 o'clock. Take you right up to broadcast time from the Garden at 7.30. And the face-off with Fred Cusick, Dave Shea, and Derek Sanderson at 7.35. Stanley Cup playoff action on your New England Sports Network. We deliver. The executive producer of Boston Bruins Hockey is Mark Quenzel. Our coordinating producer, Mike Baker. Associate producers Liz White and Kate Monahan. And our graphic coordinator, Tom McNeely, the third. Exclusive presentation of your New England Sports Network, we deliver.